at the 22 yard line by Jamar Williams. And that's where John Kitna and the Lions will go to work. Kitna last year completing 63% of his passes, a career high. Those numbers are down in 2008 as he tries to guide the Lions to their first win of the year against a very formidable defense. The Lions will start this first series. Kevin Smith is the deep back. First and ten Detroit. And they start on the ground with the outstanding rookie. And not much happening as Brian Erlacher's there to make the tackle. Well, Coach, the Lions are one of eight teams without any points on their first possessions. Let's take a look at their starting lineup. Well, on the offensive line, they're starting Manny Ramirez in his first start ever next to a rookie, uh, Gosder Churla. So obviously that's going to be a task for them. Uh, at the receiver position, they're big guns. Obviously, Calvin Johnson, Roy Williams, this is John Kitten's got to get the ball to Smith still in the backfield as Kitna drops back to throw it on second down and his first pass of the afternoon is batted away intended for Roy Williams Charles Tillman had the coverage and on cue ball do we take a look at the Bears on defense. Uh, this is a group right now that is without Tommy Harris he's been suspended today so Israel Adonage gets his first start in there at defensive tackle a couple of pro bowlers there Lance Briggs the last three in a row Erlacher the captain here. And then they're happy. Charles Tillman has been injured, but he's playing here today. And really, their savior is Mike Brown. Been healthy so far this season. Such an important cog to this defense. Lions have struggled on third downs this year. They rank 29th in the league, converting on just under 27% of opportunities. And Kitten is pressured. He goes down at the six. Lance Briggs leading the way for that vaunted Chicago defense. It's a young right side right there. Manny Ramirez making his first start. Gosner his second start. But you see Charles Tillman comes from the corner free, untouched, and he starts, he leads that wave. Yeah, the, the way the backers pepper their linebackers in and out, mess with the offensive line calls. It's very difficult when they bring, then bring somebody from the secondary. A lot of times you get a free runner like that. So Nick Harris had to punt it away after a three and out. Devin Hester deep for Chicago. Hold all tickets when Hester's back deep. He gets out of one jam and gets across the 50, still on his feet into Lions territory. There goes Devin Hester, knocked out of bounds at the 27 as Kevin Smith prevented any further damage on the return. And there is a flag down on the play. Check in with our head referee Scott Green for the first time. Offside, defense, number 55, five yard penalty, fourth down. Well, that negates a 28 yard return by Devin Hester as he'll kick it away again. Well, uh, you know, everybody talks about you can't kick the ball to Devin Hester. You got to do something to keep the ball away from him right there. He would have been a huge change of field position. Now they have an opportunity again to try to kick away from him. And punters don't like this. It changes the routine. They possibly shank it one way or the other. They hate the fact that they have to position punt. But obviously with a dynamic talent like Devin Hester, you can't consciously put the ball in his hands, Baldy. I would uh, take my chances on shanking it rather than let this guy because you know he hasn't scored yet this year in the first month and you know he's dying to get more to the end. Well the 28 yarder would have been his longest return of the season. He'll take this one back starting at the 39. He cuts it up the middle and is tripped up at the 46. Gerald Alexander makes the special team stop for the Lions and that ended up working quite well for Detroit only a seven yard return after the penalty by Devin Hester. Well, time for Kyle Orton to go to work. And for Kyle Orton, two of his three highest passer ratings are against the Detroit Lions. Over the last couple of weeks, only Brett Favre has thrown more touchdown passes than the Bears' starting quarterback. And through three last week in the first half that were about as pretty as you can get. And that's Devin Hester's first start ever at any level of wide receiver. They split Matt Forte out wide, and he makes the catch on the first down pass. He's into Lions territory, tackled at the 46 by Jared DeVries. Baldy, let's take a look at the rest of the Chicago starting offense. Well, in the offensive line right here, Olin Krutz anchors this group. 
He's been the pro bowler, not just anchors this group, but he's the leader of the locker room, the entire team. Matt Forte is one of those sensational rookies that everybody is talking about. Devin Hester starts at wide receiver right now for Brandon Lloyd. Look for him to go deep early in his game. Forte the long back on second and short. And Forte the ball carrier running between the tackles for a first down. Well, allowing uh, a lot of points in first quarter has been a problem for the Detroit defense, Coach. Well, they've got to get more of a pass rush from their down four. They've got the personnel to do it. The linebackers are solid core. Ernie Sims, Paris Lennon are very, very athletic. In the back end, obviously, this is where they're going to have to come up with the turnovers to put their offense on a short field. Only the Rams have allowed more first quarter points than the Lions. Something we talked about when we went on the air moments ago. Forte still in the backfield. And Forte right up the middle once again as he stopped at the 36 by the combination of Paris Lennon and Ernie Sims. But Matt Coach. Forte has really been a story, Baldy, the second rounder out of Tulane and a guy who uh, can do just about everything offensively for Chicago. Well, look at those numbers. I mean, just look at what he's done in the first month. He said he was actually more beat up in the, in the year last year at Tulane than he, than he feels right now after the month of all the work that he's gotten. And you're going to have to start pacing him as the season goes on. Tight end Desmond Clark in the slot on second and seven. Orton dumps it off to Forte again. It's been the Matt Forte show to start this one as he's tackled just short of a first down. Paris Lennon again with the stop for the Lions. Yeah, Baldy, you, you've said it. Obviously, Matt Forte, this is the first rookie to start at running back for the uh, Chicago Bears since Walter Payton did it. And I'm amazed at just how much they're putting on this young man's plate. Very mature young man. They really feel like he can handle it. Well, look at what they've done already to start this game. Every, every single play so far has been in his hands. Third and one. And the pitch is to Forte. He patiently waits for a block, breaks a tackle, and has a Chicago first down. Th well, watch him take the hits here, because these are the tough yards right now. I mean, he's going to run behind the fullback here, but these are all him, because here comes Ernie Sims, gets a hit on him, and Corey Redding gets a hit on him, and he's bouncing off those tackles, and he gets the tough yards inside. We've seen him out in the screen game today. We've seen him at wide receiver today. And now we see him get the tough yards. And Kevin Jones will give Forte a blow after he gets the first down. First and ten. They split Jones out wide now. And Orton's first down pass is caught by Rasheed Davis. The former cornerback makes the reception. Spoke with uh, Matt Forte yesterday. One of those rookies that uh, the league is talking about. Chris Johnson's been excellent in uh, in Tennessee. Darren McFadden, the first back taken. And Matt Forte in the second round, people thought maybe the Bears were passing up all these great backs that were drafted in the first round. Those three guys all taken, but the Bears feel like he was the best back in the draft for the way they wanted to use him. It's amazing to me that he was the sixth running back taken. The pitch to Kevin Jones, the ex-Lion with an agenda of his own here this afternoon, has a first down before Langston Moore can stop him. You're talking about an agenda now. This is a guy that led the Lions in rushing the last four years. Now, he's had injuries uh, the last two years to his ACL last year. And a Liz Frank injury the year before. They let him go, and he was upset. Not one Lion player called him, wished him good luck, how you doing? And so an opportunity to pay back here today in the, the Bears' first division game. He's up for the task today. And they need to rotate hit him up for Matt Forte to limit those touches that we talked about on the young rookie. Forte back in. And flags. False start. Offense. Number 81. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. It was Rasheed Davis who jumped offside from the wide receiver spot. Let's check in with the third member of our broadcast crew on the field, Laura Oakman. Hello, gentlemen. Every player I talked to this week said the same thing. When they first saw that schedule, they thought, oh, no, that buys too early, but all agreed it was the best timing. Corey Redding said it was huge this week to get guys rejuvenated, to feel good, to get some changes. But the whole difference, he said, is attitude. We were too tight. We were not having fun. He said the key today, go out and hit somebody and have fun while we're doing it. 
Backed up to first and 15 after the penalty. Thank you, Laura. As Forte is the ball carrier, stuffed for a loss of a yard by Paris Lennon. You know, Baldy on the inside yesterday, or the other day when we listened to Joe Barry, their defensive coordinator in Detroit, he talked about how the under tackle, the three technique, in their case, Corey Redding, has to be the piston that drives the defense. So far, I've not seen that out of Corey Redding. Yeah, you know, and that guy has the freedom. You know, now, they paid him a lot of money a couple of years ago. They moved him from end into defensive tackle. Rod Marinelli, longtime defense line coach, thought he's perfect for it. But this is the play. An under tackle right here. He's going to line up between the left guard and left tackle, and he's going to get the freedom Chicago. to rush this the quarterback. This is the first charge timeout. Kyle Orton didn't like what he saw. He spends the first timeout of the game. Bear is on the move to start things this afternoon. There's no hidden fees. Well, the Bears began this opening drive in good field position, and before their ninth play of the drive, Kyle Orton spent an early timeout. He lines up here on second and 15 with Forte in the backfield. Devin Hester, the slot receiver here. Here comes a pass rush, and Orton can't get out of the way. Jared DeVries. Last year at Ford Field, DeVries had a career-high three sacks at the Bears' expense. No, Matt, that could have been avoided. Kyle Orton really missed a hot read here. You're going to see Devin Hester. As soon as he sees these guys up, he's going to be looking for the ball right here. And Kyle Orton doesn't see it. Watch, see, Hester's looking back right there. That's on the quarterback. Hester's looking for that ball. There's a big void in the defense. They've got to get that timing down between the two of them. It's going to bring it third and long now. And out of the shotgun, they hand it to Forte. Forte breaks it inside the 20. Boy, Forte has been featured, as we said when we went on the air, already this afternoon. Well, they have confidence to get him the ball in a lot of different places. Now, he's excellent at every phase. You can see that he breaks tackles here. He runs behind his pads. He's a big guy at six foot two, but he gets low. He pushes the pile, and coach, it's not easy to overload a rookie like that with the playbook. Well, offensive coordinator Ron Turner, I was amazed at how comfortable Ron was with willing to put this guy anywhere on the field. A 37-yard field goal attempt from Robbie Gold. Now he's seven of eight so far this year. And the Bears are the first on the board in Detroit. 6.48 remaining in the first. It's 3-0 Chicago. Bears get on the scoreboard first a 37 yard field goal by Robbie Gold making it 3 nothing Chicago a scoring drive chewed up 11 plays and consumed just over six and a half minutes and again Matt Forte featured prominently in that Bears offensive attack. So Gold set to kick it away as Brandon Middleton is deep once again for the Lions low line drive that takes a bounce. Corey Smith in the rare position of taking a kickback as he finds Middleton to pitch it back to, and the Lions will start with good field position when we come back. Introducing the all-new Nissan Maxima. It has an award-winning 290 horsepower V6 engine, an intelligent CVT transmission, and a masterfully crafted interior the bun and by visa go on live life and remember that no matter what it takes life takes visa well after a quick three and out that began the ball game John Kitten and the Lions will go back to work for their second possession here this afternoon first quarters have been a problem for Detroit as we talked about when we went on the air only the Colts have had the football in less time through the first four weeks this season than the Lions, so a prolonged drive is somewhat in order. Kevin Smith is the lone back, and a three-receiver set starts it for Kitna. Talk about a missed assignment. A man who never misses an assignment, our colleague Kurt Menefee in Los Angeles. Well, Dominic Hickson getting a starting assignment for the Giants in place of the suspended Plexico Burris. Opening drive, he makes a 32-yard touchdown reception, his first of his young NFL career. And the Giants lead the Seahawks 7-0. Matt and Killer Bees take it away. 
Kurt thanks and it's a quick no huddle offense now by the Lions after the missed pass on first down. This is Smith who loses his footing and gains maybe a yard. Now the Lions talked about going to a no huddle to try to calm down all the activity of the Bears. John Kitna has already checked the ball twice. This last one a miscue to the wideout. Obviously we're on the same page but they feel like the no huddle will calm down a little bit of what the Bears traditionally do. Third and eight again a three receiver set. We're talking about all the activity right there. But the up is lined up in the line of scrimmage challenging your protection and seeing what you're going to do to adjust. From the safety Daniel Manning up to the line of scrimmage and again Kittner trying to check into the right play with the time nearly expiring. Two seconds left on the play clock. A little bit of a pocket. The pass is dumped off to Kevin Smith who's wrapped up shy of the first down by Israel Adonijay. Coach, that first play where there was a miscue between Roy Williams and John Kidd, and they've been together for three years. We see the Giants highlight a rookie catching a touchdown pass from Eli Manning. How, how does that happen at this stage? Well, and these guys were excited about going to the three wides offense and no huddle. They actually went to the coaches and said, we need to do yes. this. So to come out and not communicate it properly this early in the game has got to be a little discouraging. Nick Harris to kick it away to Devin Hester once again. Hester inside the 10 has to call for the fair catch. 5.09 left in the opening quarter, 3 0 Chicago. Two old Tampa associates, Lovey Smith and Rod Marinelli, well familiar with one another as coaching adversaries. And so far, advantage Lovey. Orton and the Bears backed up inside the 10 to begin this drive. And they're going to try to throw it out of trouble. Orton's pass hits a wide open Greg Olson into Lions territory and knocked out of bounds at the 40. A 52 yard gain. Well, they're in a two tight end set, and it's excellent play action pass. You're going to see Olson here. He's just coming across the formation, and this is just a coverage breakdown right now. No linebacker picks up. Greg Olson going across the field caught a touchdown pass against the Eagles last weekend with the injury to Brandon Lloyd look for Greg Olson to pick up the pace here in the passing game the Bears longest pass completion of the season and a career long for Greg Olson just before the play clock expires it's Forte who might gain a yard Thursday game one of the National League Championship Series is Manny Ramirez and the Dodgers fresh off their unlikely sweep of the Cubs take on either the Phillies or the Brewers to determine who earns the right to advance to the World Series coverage of the NLCS starts Thursday at 8 Eastern 5 Pacific game one in high def only on Fox. Manny Ramirez leading the Dodgers having an incredible month this September and October. Second and nine with Forte in the backfield It's Forte again trying to juke a defender and is finally taken down by Ernie Sims. You know we, we've talked about Matt Forte and the number of touches you have to be aware uh, that you give the ball mm -hmm. to a rookie Baldy but this is a guy that had more than 400 touches last year at Tulane so he knows what it is to carry the load. And he came in here and Lovey Smith was so impressed the whole staff was he came in showed up with a suit and tie he came in this is a business and he was ready to be a good businessman and he's given him a, a full day here for the fifth week in a row. Third and six the Bears have the nickel package on the field Orton rolls out the shotgun right to the Lions with the nickel package and the pass is incomplete intended for Marty Booker. You know this this was Detroit had a great opportunity to keep the Chicago Bears pinned down the big play to Greg Olson uh, now even though they weren't able to convert this to a score if they can keep them pinned back down they've totally won the field position battle between the two teams in this exchange. That was the big play the big play by Greg Olson and they've got three good tight ends in Chicago Greg Olson been featured here the last two weeks. Brad Maynard has landed 11 of his 20 punts inside the 20 and Mike Furry will signal for the fair catch and let it bounce where it's down at the goal line. Danielle Manning pins Kitna back to start the possession. 
Well, the Lions are going to start this possession in a little better shape than we thought. Danielle Manning uh, could have really pinned them back here. Well, he had a chance here to get himself set. See, he pushed that. He actually stepped in the end zone right here. He's in the end zone. All we need to do is know where he's at on the field, stay in the field of play. They could have pinned that ball right at the one yard line. And you work that every day in practice. The whole point is you've got to know where you are on the field. Instead, it is first and 10 from the 20 for Kitna, who'll work out of the shotgun here on first down. It's batted away at the line of scrimmage. Oh, the big boy Dusty Dvorak had a chance to pick up the, uh, the batted ball, but couldn't get under it in time. Well, Dvorak was injured his first two years. He's given this team a lift in the defensive line. Gets right in the passing lane there of Kitna. Bats that ball down, and this, this offense simply has no rhythm here in this first quarter. Rudy Johnson's checked in, and there's a flag on the field. Yeah, no rhythm is an understatement. Minus five yards for the Lions in two and a half drives. Approachment, defense, number 98. Five-yard penalty, second down. And maybe Dvorak still spitting over not being able to pick up that ball in the air. He's guilty of the penalty. Already the third penalty charged to the Bears. They were penalized only once in their big win against the Eagles on Sunday. If the Lions are going to continue with the no huddle, they have got to pick their pace up a little bit. They're negating their advantage of a no huddle offense because now he's just trying to react to the Bears' defense. You have to dictate the tempo in a no huddle offense. Rudy Johnson, the ball carrier. And he has maybe a yard. But this is all by design for the Bears because they give you so many looks up front. It's working perfectly as far as Lovey Smith's concerned. Well, Brian, Brian's point is perfect right here. I mean, right now, Kitten is looking at the, the, the Bears defense. He's saying, okay, Erlacher and Briggs are back here. All right, now I'll, I'll call the play based on that. Now they both come. Third and four, nowhere to go for Kitten. And he finally gets rid of it incomplete of intended for Roy Williams and there's a flag down in the backfield. Boy those third down conversions have just been miserable for Detroit on both sides of the football. Ineligible downfield on the offense number 63 penalty is declined fourth down. Well the Lions will have to punt it away anyway. Now, now here you see John. You, you've got Jim Coletto and John Kitten. Jim Coletto came down out of the booth the last time we saw them against San Francisco for this very reason. He felt like John Kitten at times needed calming down. He's a very emotional player, and he felt like he needed to be the guy to do it. So hence, he comes down to the sideline. Three possessions for the Detroit offense. Three, three and outs. Devin Hester from the 23. Out of bounds at the 27. Well, we've already seen a lot of Matt Forte on the field. Let's learn a little bit more about Matt Forte. Yeah, I enjoy fishing. Anytime I get a chance, me and my dad, and my brother, we go out there and fishing. I always catch the biggest fish because I'm the best fisherman. On this little bitty pole, great white. They're what they call wishermen. I'm pulling in fish, looking at them like, are you going to catch anything? You going to help me out? Oh, it's a big one. Well, he's from a town, Slidell, outside of New Orleans. He's a country boy. Knows uh, how to catch those catfish down there. First and 10 for Chicago. It's Kevin Jones in the backfield here on the play fake. Orton with plenty of time. And he gets it to Greg Olson once again. Olson has another first down. Let's check in once again with Kurt Menefee in Los Angeles. And the Giants add another touchdown, this time courtesy of Brandon Jacobs. Three yards rumbling into the end zone. They lead 14-3 over Seattle. Back to Matt, Brian, Brian, Laura, Dewey, Cheatham, and Powell. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds, uh, looks like Seattle, uh, the typical West Coast, East Coast travel. We saw it last week with Arizona. Looks like Seattle struggling on the East Coast again. Seattle thought they were healthy at receiver, but it looks like they can't keep the defense off the field as the handoff is to Kevin Jones for a modest gain before being tackled by Dwayne White. You know, Baldy, we saw the third down conversion chart up a minute ago where, and it's interesting, these, these are polar opposites, where Detroit is in the bottom part of the league in terms of only converting 26%. They're giving up 45% conversion on third down. The Bears are just the opposite. That's got to change today. Well, I mean, that's just indicator of that Detroit is a bad team and Chicago is playing pretty good football. 
Like a lot of guys in the Bears told us, we should be 4-0. We've got to be able to hold a lead in the fourth quarter. Second and seven, the linebacking court back off the line. The dump off to Kevin Jones, who is wrapped up at the 45 by Corey Redding. And Ernie Sims, a gain of three. Now Jones doing a little talking. Well, you know, I mean, he's going against his former team. And there's nothing that gets you more ready for a game than if you're seeing your old teammates, especially guys that he felt like they spurned. And, and talking to the Bears, what they were surprised about from Kevin Jones is how quickly he came back from reconstructive knee surgery. That uh, they thought maybe put him on the pup list for six weeks and let him get going. But he was wrestling Olin Kruitz in the locker room and training camp, and they said, this kid's ready to play. Chicago one of three on third down. A quick pass caught by Devin Hester for a Chicago first down. And you know what? That's a big play for Devin Hester. When you'll go to a guy that's developing as a wide receiver in that kind of route, it's not the vertical down the field, that's a big play for him. And with that, the first quarter will expire. Chicago on the move again and on top in Detroit. 3 nothing Bears. Fox NFL Sunday will continue after these messages. More indicative of how lopsided the first quarter was than the score. Chicago has had the football almost three times as long as the Lions to start this one. First and ten is here across midfield. At the Detroit 47 with Jones in the backfield. Orton's quick pass is caught by the tight end Desmond Clark. You know, Coach, both these teams play the same style of defense. And what they're trying to do is get to a collision point when they play this. So when Devin Hester caught that last pass, here comes Daniel Bullocks, here comes the linebacker right here. They're trying to get the ball out right there. And that's, and you know, right now Detroit is getting no turnovers. They've had one fumble all year, no interception, and they're not getting to those collision points. But credit Devin Hester for getting that ball in his hands and getting down. Second and four from the 41. Kevin Jones trying to get around the edge, and he is tackled for a loss. Paris Lennon leads the charge, a loss of six on the play. Well, we've talked about Kevin Jones wanting to send a message to his teammates. I think his teammates want to send a message to Kevin Jones as well, saying, we love you, man, you're a good guy, but uh, but uh, we're not going to let you disrespect us out here on the football field. The point you made about Devin Hester is exactly right. That's the point I made earlier that that's a good sign for Devin Hester. That showed that he's maturing as a receiver. Here he is up on top here. Full-time receiver now, spending his time in the meeting rooms with receivers, practicing there every day. Orton pump fakes once and overthrows his target, trying to get it to Marty Booker, who was well covered by Kevin Smith. Now Detroit's doing a good job on their third down conversions today. They've been they've given up some big plays, but the field position battle, they're losing. Mm -hmm. You know, they have a good series, they they force them to punt. But unless they get a big return here, the Detroit offense is going to get backed up again. At some point, you have to do something to change, particularly in a 3 nothing game, the field position back. Lovey Smith loves this. Put Brad Maynard back there. Go pin him back. Cover this punt. Put the defense on the field. Mike Furry deep for the Maynard punt, and he signals fair catch around the 10-yard line. This ball checks up and bounces out of bounds inside the 10. Another long field for Kitna and... And by State Farm, proud sponsor of the NFL and the best day of the week. Well, the Lions have had enough trouble this year sustaining offense, making their job more difficult here today has been rotten field position. They're just inside the 10 as they go to work here with 13-34 left in the half. Rudy Johnson is the back. He's the ball carrier across the left side. Breaks a big one into the secondary of Chicago. A first down for Detroit. Their first of the afternoon. Well, in Detroit, they've got a good combination of backs. The fact they can go back and forth between Rudy Johnson and Kevin Smith. Rudy Johnson, the more veteran player, obviously the upside that they see in Kevin Smith. But uh, if they can maintain a drive and get a good balance of run and pass, they can take emotional control of this game, and they better do it right now. This was an offense, bear in mind, that wanted to establish the run first and foremost on opening day. Kittness pass is caught by Roy Williams as he's smothered by Erlacher and Graham and company. Now, they may not be in no huddle right here, but they want to keep a good pace in and out of the huddle. If it's not no huddle, then go ahead and field, make the 
the, the Chicago Beer Bears feel like they're under pressure. They got to get their calls in quick. See if you can do something to get them off their game. Right now, the Bears are rotating defensive linemen. Mark Anderson in there at left end. Marcus Harrison, the rookie from Arkansas, in there at defensive tackle. Now, Anthony Adams here today playing nose tackle. So the backup defensive line in there as they wave those guys through, trying to keep them fresh. Gains of 15 and 10 on first down for the Lions as they move the ball a little bit for the first time. Balls out. Alex Brown came around the corner and knocked it free. The Bears say they've got it. Chicago football. Well, this is Jeff Backus on the left side. He's not getting any help off that left side. Just gets beaten to the outside, dips his shoulder down. This is a great, great, that's just good, great finish by Alex Brown here. Ready to tomahawk the ball out in order to get uh, to get the fumble. There's got to be some. I mean, John Kittner has to get rid of that ball. He's got to step up. That clock inside of his head right there has got to be ticking, coach, that you're not going to keep these guys coming off that corner forever. Sure seemed like he held it a long time, probably because the coverage down the field was very good. Well, Lovey Smith told us yesterday their goal every Sunday is three turnovers. And they've got their first here this afternoon. A great chance for Orton in the offense. This is Forte. And he's taken down at the 16 by Jordan Dyson, the rookie middle linebacker. You know, we spent time with Matt Forte yesterday, and he visited the Hall of Fame in his his tour guide there, the host. You grow up and, you know, you become a Chicago Bear, and, and Gail Sayers is showing you around and showing you Walter Payton. We asked him who his favorite runner was, and he always liked Walter Payton, but he's trying to develop his own style, and we're seeing it right now. Nothing doing this time as Forte stopped at the 15 after a gain of maybe a yard by Jared DeVries. Now, as much as Chicago has been in control of this game, they need to come away with seven points here. They'll take the three, make it a 6 nothing game, and the Detroit Lions from their sideline have got to be uh, feel pretty good about with all the things that have gone against them for it only to be six points. So Chicago needs to come away with seven. Here. Third and just a yard. Bears offense has been very good on third down this year. Play fake. Orton toward the end zone looking for Aaron McKee and that one's well overthrown. Jason McKee rather and that was thrown past him. Well, Jason McKee was running a wheel route. That's an out and up against man coverage, and he stopped halfway through the route. He threw Kyle Orton off, but fourth and less than a yard right now. The Bears staying and keeping the offense on the field. Well, this is what we're talking about. Lovey Smith knows he's got to come away with seven points here. And they'll go to the bell cow who stopped short. Forte didn't have enough as Dwayne White led the charge for the Lions. The Detroit defense holds. Now here, here's the fourth and one by the Chicago Bears down in scoring position. They know they've got to come away with the touchdown. Great spike down coming off the end. Pulls up short and watch the emotion of the Detroit Lions. Chicago had the opportunity to take emotional control of this game, and now Detroit, if they can seize on it, can take this game back into control. Getting his first down pass is caught by Sean McDonald over the middle for a gain of four. And just to build on that, the, the emotional swings of any given game. Lovey Smith was trying to take emotional control of the game by going on a fourth and one, Baldy. Mm -hmm. It didn't turn out that way. And now the concern is can, can Detroit take advantage of the emotional swing and now take the control back on their side of the court? Second and five. And the inside handoff for Smith. He is met right at the line by Israel Idanaje. Let's check in in Los Angeles with Kurt Menefee. Aaron Rodgers started with that sprained shoulder today. He's been up and down, but when he has been up, he has been very good. Look at this strike into double coverage. Connects on the touchdown to Donald Driver, 44 yards, and gets the Packers on the board. Atlanta still holding on, though, to a three-point lead. Matt, Brian, and Brian. Kurt, thanks. Yeah, if Aaron Rodgers is hurt, you wouldn't know it by looking at that Not play. that throw. Or the touchdown throw after he got hurt last week to Greg Jennings for a touchdown. Four now. Even, even, even. And again, Kitna changing the play. Two seconds on the play clock, and they just get the snap off. Quick pass caught by Calvin Johnson. Ball's out. Ball's still out. 
Israel Indonaje was in the vicinity of the football. I, I just don't know if he had possession of the ball. They're saying no, incomplete. It's incomplete pass. Incomplete pass. Yeah, I, 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 clearly, I don't think he had possession of this ball. But again, Baldy, this is the collision point you're talking about. Right, you can't tell me that Calvin Johnson's not aware these guys are, are zeroing in on Here him. they're all coming. You got Charles Tillman from behind him, Kevin Payne coming over the top of him. And that's Charles Tillman right there stripping that ball, not allowing him to get hey, into his body. Boy, Calvin Johnson has had his trouble with drops. He shared with us the other day, he feels like he's made a lot of progress as Devin Hester starts the punt return at the 40 and is knocked out of bounds around midfield. And we've got a flag after the extracurricular. Hester popped up as if to say, yeah, flag him. And the officials oblige. Was it Ramsey Robinson? Scott Green will share it with us. Personal foul, 38, kicking team, late hit out of bounds, 15 yard penalty, first down. And the former Mr. Irrelevant is guilty of the penalty that'll get us into a break. 9.23 left in the half, still 3 0 Bears. Fox is sponsored by UPS. What can Brown do for you? Well, after the penalty on the punt return, Chicago will start at the Detroit 37. Hester out wide to the bottom of your screen as they reset Desmond Clark before the snap. to Forte again snuffed out. Let's go back to that last play on the Lions drive pass. Well this is one of the demons you fight when you're 0 3. He's starting to look up the field a little early doesn't secure the catch. The Lions lead the NFL in drop passes and that's what happens when you're an 0 3 team. And Charles Tillman playing that corner over there. Lovey Smith said he's the best tackler and stripper in the league. Guy that can actually tackle, tackle get the guy down and get the ball out. Nobody better in this league right now in Lovey Smith's eyes. Second and nine. Like 20. Four reporting at Paris Lennon who comes on second down. And the pass is caught by Rasheed Davis who gets out of bounds with the first down. Now it's interesting both defenses are doing the peppering of the backers causing the quarterbacks to check. That looked to be exactly the same play John Kitna was trying to get to earlier in the game when the receiver didn't get the yeah. check went vertical and he went to throw the out and he wasn't there. One offense in sync a little bit or they'd like to finish this drive the other offense Detroit still a mess like nothing happened in the Bible. Forte the lone back on first and ten. And Forte running behind his tight end Greg Olson. Again, nothing doing up the middle as Alex Lewis makes the play. Well, you know, Joe Barry uh, defensively had a chance to look at the bye and what they wanted to do to get better. And for them, it was all about, uh, you can see here, playing fast, staying off the ground. We've seen them on the ground so often. Once they're blocked and they're on the ground, they're not getting back up and containing the quarterback containing the running game so far they've done that pretty, pretty well and that's why it's only three nothing well, the Bears offense has been on the field virtually the entire half better than double the time of possession still with only three points as that pass is incomplete intended for Desmond Clark coach what you're talking about with Joe Barry is all teams when they have that bye week it's about quality control you self scout yourself what can we do to start you know bettering our team and for Detroit and you know get a win and how do we get that defensively they're not playing fast they're on the ground and this whole defense is predicated upon getting to the ball and getting the ball out and it's got to be actionable okay we've identified what it is now with that practice time they had a full padded practice on Monday just against one another to try to identify how we're going to make those things show up in the game and this is a perfect down to get after the quarterback and make something happen Chicago's offense two of six on third down. Here comes the pressure. Orton gets the pass away. But no doing. Garrett Wolf made the play, but Dwayne White made the bigger play on the tackle, and there's a flag down. I think Chicago's gonna get offside. Defense. Number 78. Five-yard penalty. 
Third down. Wow. So this is the type of thing. You, you get them off the field. You, you've been able to stem the emotional uh, tide, so to speak, and, and you're offsides. These are just these are the little things that when you're an 0-3 team that just drive you nuts. The players don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. They're 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 has got as much want as as a 3-0 team. But that that robbing of the focus, that little bit of focus when you're 0-3 is what leads you to be an 0-4. Well, let's watch what Corey Redding does this time. To we'll see if he can make up for that mistake. Orton again out of the shotgun, third and four. Steps up in the pocket, dumps it off to Devin Hester, who runs for the Bears' first down. Nobody on the field in a blue uniform is going to catch up to Devin Hester when he catches a football, an eight yard gain. Boy, he was moving fast, too. I don't know if you could put a clock on that. Maybe Usain Bolt. You know, could run like that, but he was clearly the fastest guy that's moved on the field here today coming across the middle. Well, maybe that linebacker, that linebacker thought he had an angle, and that <laughs> angle disappeared <laughs> really in a way. They'll do that to you. First and 10 for Chicago from the Detroit 11. And it's Kevin Jones in the backfield. This is Jones dancing around the right side. He picks up three. Well, one of the things that Joe Barry talked about, they have a whole list of things of what a loaf is, and they wanted to make it very clear to the players. It started out not sprinting to the to the football, Baldy. Change of speed. Yep. That means obviously recognizing what's going on. We just talked about it. Get off the ground, right? If you rush and, and the ball goes past you, turn and get to it. Get passed up by another player. Don't let someone else beat you. Turning down a hit and, it, and not finishing aggressively at the end of the play. Finish is something that you're always stressing as a player. Second and eight, three tight ends on the field for the Bears. Olsen wide at the bottom of your screen. And Orton to throw it on second and eight. Pass is caught by Forte. Touchdown, Chicago. Boy, nice veteran move by Forte to stretch that ball out as he's going down to break the plane. Everything this young man does, we keep seeing a maturity that, that uh, belies his age. A veteran of five games. <laughs> yeah, he knows exactly where he's on the field. He's getting split by the two linebackers there. Now, was the knee down yeah, before I, the ball got stretched? I think they're going to need to challenge yeah, this. Yeah, we got to challenge. The red flag has just come out. He threw that red flag all that distance? <laughs> that, that red That's flag. the best throw tonight. <laughs> Good. That's as long a pass as they've completed all game long. That pass, that red flag is past that. One of the players had to have that in their pocket. Because wow. <laughs> I know I know that Rod Marinelli can't throw it that far. I'll say this, though. Even if they say that this is not a touchdown, they're going to have a first down. They're going to have a fresh set of downs inside the one-yard line. Detroit is challenging ruling on the field that it was a touchdown. We'll take a break as they go under the hood. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. Wow. Detroit is charged with a timeout. All right, here it goes. You're going to see right here. You're going to take a look here. Watch the left leg. All they're looking at is the left leg. And right here, it's not on the ground as the ball gets stretched across the goal line. Still not down. Now, the right leg might be down, but we can't see it from yeah. that angle. And, and, the, and the official can't just decide, well, that defies the law of physics. physics? <laughs> you know, I don't see it, so I can't call it. Right. Inconclusive video evidence. The touchdown stands. And the Matt Forte show continues for Lovey Smith and the Bears. Now 10-0 Chicago. The mountains on this Coors Light cold call stands. A touchdown play. Orton to Forte. A nine yard TD catch. And uh, boy, you know, we say that kind of as an aside, but Forte has become such a major part of this offense just five games into his NFL career. Brandon Middleton bringing a kickback from the Detroit Six. Knocked at the 20 and tackled at the 24 yard line.
Well, be sure to tune into Fox for all the action in the NLCS as Manny Ramirez and the Dodgers will take on either the Phillies or the Brewers. That's Thursday at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, Game 1 of the NLCS. Can Manny Ramirez continue to carry the Dodgers? And it's looking more and more like that's going to be the Phillies as they leave Milwaukee 5-7. Quick pass caught by Roy Williams, who's still on his feet, breaking tackles. Williams dragged out of bounds at the 37, a first down for the Lions. Now this is the first time we've seen the four wides out of Detroit. And this is what Roy Williams is capable of doing. He just needs to do more of it. Big, strong, physical, runs out of the tackle, has a little bit of burst going to the outside. Out of the shotgun, another quick reception by Williams and more yards after the catch as he's finally corralled at midfield by Charles Tillman, a 13-yard gainer. Well, Coach, we've seen a lot of different things there. We've seen three wide receivers, and a tight end in the back. We've seen a attempt at a hurry up, and now it looks like, you know what, our best and only option here is to go to four wide receiver. Again, the quick play and the quick reception by Calvin Johnson, who's taken down shy of a first down this time by Daniel Manning and Charles Tillman, and that's the first reception for Calvin Johnson today. Now we saw Tampa Bay at some point very quickly say, we're not even going to try to run anymore. This right. is a waste of time. We're going to throw it right Brian Deary Greasy 67 times. We'll yeah. see if Detroit's going to do the same thing. And can the protection hold up here to do that? Not with a four wide receiver set, apparently. And this is where John Kitna, if if they're going to continue to maintain this pace, has to protect his offensive line. You got to know the pressure is going to come. Get the ball out of your hand quick as you sense it begins to collapse on you. That's see they were setting up a screen. So the look, right. Manny Ramirez right guard was just hitting Harrison and taking off. Can't hold it. And this one incomplete intended for Roy Williams. You know, the Lions really unable to sustain much offensively. Kitna just 6 of 12. Rudy Johnson with 16 yards on the ground and three catches by Roy Williams leads the receiving core. Coach, you can't take a sack on a screen. That was a screen that he got sacked on, but the rookie, he's just a rookie. He's never run, he's never played before. And so his timing was too quick. Let Harrison come in too fast on Kitna. And that's what caught Kitna on the guard. Hester's going to let this one go over his head and bounce into the end zone. Well, Detroit is going in fits and spurts right now. And yeah, we're in fits and spurts, and they can't sustain anything. Yeah. You know, and that's the problem right now, Baldy. Yeah. They're showing some signs. They wanted to get to the four wides, the receivers, and and everybody's been pushing towards that. And they do a couple good plays, and then and then they kind of collapse. Again. They destruct. But they, they simply can't hold up pass protection wise to go to four wide. And that was the problem last year when they collapsed in the second half of the season. They weren't good enough up front to run the offense Mike March wanted to. So first and ten for Chicago, starting from the twenty. Plenty of time left in the half for the Bears to try to get on the scoreboard once again. Orton looking down the middle of the field. He's got Hester wide open. All four, and the ball's out with a flag on the field, by the way. Getting ready to say all four of Hester's receptions have come for a first down as we check in on the flag. Illegal contact. Defense, number 28. Penalty is declined. First down. It's one way to slow him down. Well, he got the ball out also. Lee Biden, you know, got one of those strips that you're talking about, trying to force a turnover. You know, when Detroit got off to that 6-2 and two start last year, trying to keep things positive when they were winning games, they had created 24 turnovers, a lot against the Bears when they won here last year. They just can't get the ball out. They tried to in that play. Well, Detroit so far has handled any of the emotional challenges. Just when something good happens for them, it gets yanked back and it turns into something bad. So after the big play, the Bears in Lions territory once again. Clock ticking to 326 left in the half. Orton buys some time, a flag in the backfield, and Orton throws it away, likely a hold. Well, anytime a quarterback, let's look at the call here. Holding offense, number 67. 10-yard penalty, 
First down. Josh Beekman trying to grab on to Sean Cody. Yeah, when a quarterback leaves the huddle the way Kyle Orton did there, it's kind of tough because you've got your man set, Baldy, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden now he's coming flat and running away from you. It's hard not to just extend and, and, and hold on a little bit as he goes by. Yeah. I mean, you, you know, you're in front of him, and now you're, you're at an angle with him. And it's just hard to stay in front of him when he's taking a new angle when you leave the pocket. So first and 20 now with 14 in the backfield. Another flag down as he was jumping at the line of scrimmage once again. Boy, this in stark contrast to the relatively penalty-free game that the Bears played Sunday against the Eagles. Offside, defense, five-yard penalty. First down. This one's on the Lions. Well, it's on the defensive line. They're offsides there. And Rod Marinelli is a former defensive line coach and a great one with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And in practice, he spends all of his time with the defensive line. Nothing rattles his Over cage five, more than if he sees a defensive lineman jump because he's they're taught to look at the ball. When the ball moves, you should move. First and 15 now. The penalty taketh away and it giveth right back for Chicago. Inside of three minutes in the half, play fake. And Orton's ball to a wide open. Rasheed Davis down the sideline inside the 20. You got to love the aggressiveness that Ron Turner is calling with this game. He recognizes that the emotional uh, uh, stamina of their team right now, they've got Detroit on their heels. Let's Kyle Orton air the ball out nice timing keeping that away they had a high two deep safety trying to make his way over and he just didn't get there dropped that ball in there and we've seen development from Kyle Orton from his rookie year to now his completion percentage is much higher and he throws the ball with much better anticipation Esther wide at the bottom of your screen and the quick pass caught by the tight end or caught by Marty Booker rather the wide out and that'll get us to the two minute warning Kyle Orton used to throw nothing but fastballs, according to Ron Turner. He's mixed in a breaking ball and a changeup here this year. The Chiefs' Larry Johnson rushed for 198 yards and two scores, leading Kansas City to its first win of the year. Vote for the FedEx Air and Ground NFL Players of the Week at NFL.com slash FedEx. The gang gets a little tied up. You and me in a dark hole. It's like old times, pretty. All new Prison Break tomorrow at 9, 8 Central on Fox. Well, through the first four weeks of the season, the Bears had scored in nine of ten trips to the red zone. They've scored points in two of three today. Only one touchdown, however. Hester at the top of your screen split wide here. Second and three for Chicago. Orton looking Hester's way. He makes the catch and scores the touchdown. Oh, Devin Hester has been a force at that wideout spot this afternoon. I talked with Devin Hester before the game. He said this is the first game in his life he's ever started at wide receiver. Now, look at the room that Lee Bodden gives him. And then the punt return and the return instincts just to pivot right there, knowing where the defender is, pivot away from him for the second touchdown reception in back to back weeks. Now, I, I know Devin Hester's fast, but to play him off that far, I mean, all I can do is run out of the back of the end zone. <laughs> and, uh, speed is That's speed. That's a cushion. Yeah, you only have so much uh, room left. And the gold point after is good to make it a 17 0 lead for Chicago. Well, this has been as much about the Chicago offense as it has the defense. But for one Chicago Bear, Anthony Adams, a Detroit native, grew up here, went to Martin Luther King High School. It's really a special homecoming as he is playing in front of his father for the first time ever. His father released from prison after 24 years. He is here at Ford Field. And for more on this fascinating story, we go down to Laura Oakman. Well, Matt Anthony told me he woke up this morning feeling all kinds of emotions, but mostly just really excited considering he's dreamt of this day, this moment 
since he was a little boy. As for Anthony Sr., I think overwhelmed would be the right word to sum up his feelings as I talked to him. He told me for years he's thought of his son as a superhero. He compared him to Spider-Man or to Incredible Hulk, saying the chance to get to know him as a real man has been phenomenal. Guys, I can just tell you from my point of view, standing there watching these two men talk and hug on the field, it was, it was pretty emotional all the way around. Nothing but love and forgiveness. Uh, Lauren, thanks. It is uh, one of those stories that you don't see every day at the uh, at the stadium. And Anthony Adams playing in front of his dad for the first time ever here this afternoon. Brandon Middleton bobbles the kick. He's across the 15, across the 20, and taken down at the 21-yard line. A reminder coming up on the Visa Halftime Report, Kurt Terry, Howie, Michael, and Jimmy have scores and highlights from around the league. The Fox Sports ticker, as always, has all the up-to-the-second scores and stats. That's the Visa Halftime Show coming up shortly. Now, Detroit, I mean, they're down by 17. they got to come out. they got to make, make something happen. But the last thing you want to do is give the Chicago Bears the ball back with a minute 50 left to play. Well, they've been spotting every team they played so far. 14, 21 points in the first half of every game so far. And Kitten's pass is caught shy of the 30-yard line as Mike Furry is there on the reception. Now, at this point, you're you're going to take whatever they give you. You're waiting for someone to make that big play to make it look like you got a chance to get into scoring position. Delayed handoff to Kevin Smith is good for the first down. And you always want to try to get that one first down. I mean, I know the clock is ticking, but you try to get that one first down, get a little rhythm, keep the offense on the field here. Two timeouts left for Detroit. Flag down. And getting his pass almost intercepted in and out of the hands of Mike Furry, and Kevin Payne was right there for the near pick. Detroit was not set. The receivers were still kind of lollygagging their way out there. You've got to have a sense of urgency. Illegal motion. Number 84, he was not set. Five-yard penalty, first down. Just, just the little things we talked about, this is what an 0-3 does to you. And the players, and the problem is that may be the only mistake McDonald makes all day. Right. And he could finish the game going, you know what, all I did was one bad thing. But then so did Calvin Johnson. Right. Well, then so did Roy Williams. And then so did the right guard. And, so, and all of a sudden, you got, you got one screw-up after another. First and 15 for Kitten and I. There's Roy Williams in a drop ball. Second drop by Williams today. And there you go. It just it compounds itself. You know the Lions came in with the second most number of drops in the league today. They dropped a three or four here today. Calvin Johnson, Roy Williams. So then Sean McDonald, one of those veterans you're counting on. You know he jumps offside. Roy, a guy you're counting on, drops a pass on a slant. You know how much of it is just the Lions dropping balls and how much of it is they're hearing footsteps with guys like Mike Brown and Erlacher and Briggs all around. They, they know about those guys. No, they're, just, they're, they're just uh, course, Nobody they're there for not that ball. on the same page. Roy Williams and John Kitna. They're not seeing the same thing. They're not hearing the same thing. And, and the drops you can't there's nothing kills a drive quicker except maybe penalties than a drop pass. It puts you in a long down and distance. The emotional effect has on your team because it just sucks the life right out of an offense. Or if Roy Williams is running one pattern and the quarterback is throwing another. I mean, this is just simply in a third year with Roy and Johnny, it cannot happen. Maybe with the rookie you can understand it, but not with veteran guys. Boy, and there's been a bye week in between that San Francisco game and the drop game today. Pass is caught by Kevin Smith out of the backfield, and he is swarm tackled at the 40. Time ticking under a minute. I'm a little surprised Chicago didn't use their timeout with Devin Hester back there. No doubt. Uh, you give yourself some time now. Make them punt the ball. Sure. Which, okay, they did call it. They did call it, but a little bit late. They, they, there was 48 seconds left on the clock when they could have made that call, saved them themselves at eight seconds, and that could be an important eight seconds as we come down. Now, there's no way that I would punt to Devin Hester in this situation. There's no way. Go ahead and take the out of bounds kick, right? I mean, 40 seconds ago, I mean, just don't even give this kid a chance right here. Because what's happening right now with Devin Hester having the days having it wide receiver and playing wide receiver is. Oh, it's going to take something away from the return game. We're going to lose the special field of this guy. 
Now, he wants one of these returns to show everybody that I could do both. I could be a returner and a frontline receiver. And you're far enough back now that you're really not really having the positioning. And you can kick it as long as far as you want, but it better be from the numbers out. That ball should not land between the numbers. Harris on to punt it away to Hester, and he'll call for a fair catch at the 17 yard line. 32 seconds and a lot of field left for Kyle Orton if in fact the Bears so choose to put something together here. It's a good month of football coming up on Fox. Next Sunday Dallas in Arizona October 19th San Francisco and the Giants on the 26th it's the Giants and Steelers and then November 2nd that storied rivalry between Dallas and New York. And you know what uh, is common with all those games right there Matt. At least one team from the NFC East in every one of those matchups, which I think is the best division of football at this point. I was going to say that you'll be there to see none of them live. I thought that's what you were going to say. <laughs> I have to catch them on TiVo, man. Orton's first pass is caught by Forte for a gain of three. Boy, and here's that sad story of the first half for the Detroit Lions. And, you know, it should be noted that in week two in particular, they came back and took a lead against the Packers only to see it go away quickly. Well, and if you take away the two touchdowns, they came back against the Packers. I, I, I don't I don't know what what you pull out of that. I mean, they've had the bye. I'll be honest with you. I've been coaching a long time. I've been a head coach for nine years. You go in this locker room, Rod Marinelli is going to have to pull out everything he has ever done in his life to, to figure out what he's going to tell these guys. Now, coach, let's start with the Lions. What has been the most discouraging part of this, this first half for Detroit? Well, they haven't been able to capitalize on anything that's been good. The, the drop balls, the miscues, that the, you're running out, I throw it deep, I throw it deep, you running out. After a bye week, they wanted to go no more, uh, do more no huddle, mm -hmm. which entails means you intended to do that communication on the field, and they just haven't done it. Well, I think Chicago has dictated this whole game. I mean, they've got better talent, coach. They're better coached right now. They're not beating themselves. And then I think Kyle Orton has been just the model of efficiency. I mean, he's not flashy. Got two touchdown passes here in the first half. Uh, they probably should have more points. This thing should probably be a runaway at this point. And I think the one message Lovey Smith would tell his teams is, look, We've had three really close games in a row. In fact, we've lost two fourth quarter leads. Let's not let this first division game slip away from us. Well, in a 17 nothing game, the stats, as you would imagine, are rather lopsided. Most discouraging for the Lions, not a single third down conversion. 211 yards in the air for Kyle Orton. 12 first downs as compared to five, and they've doubled them up in time of possession, have the Bears offensively. Well, you've talked about some of those leads that have gotten away from Chicago, Brian, and uh, there have been a few. Week two versus Carolina, the Bears lost a 14-point second-half lead and lost 20-17. to Week three versus the Bucks, they blew a 10-point lead in the fourth quarter and went on to lose in overtime. And then last Sunday against the Eagles, they had to make a brilliant goal line stand leading by four in the fourth quarter. They held on to win this one thanks to this great goal line stand. And the Lions are hoping that that uh, second half story can continue out here today. And as before we kick things off in the second half, we check in on the field with Laura Oakman. Thanks, Matt. I talked to the coaches. Rod Marinelli said this is not the team he expected to see coming off of that bye. He said really he gave the credit to the Bears defense saying they're doing what we're not doing, which is making plays. I said, are we going to see any adjustments, anything different the second half? He said, we believe in what we're doing. We just have to do it. As for Lovey Smith, he's not happy with the 17 points. Said we should have had more. We need to take advantage of those opportunities. He said they are expecting a fired up emotional Lions team. They are not taking them lightly right now and said that we have to keep doing what we're doing, but do it better. Lauren, thanks. Second half is underway. As the kick checks up for Devin Hester, he'll start the return at the nine, change directions, and it cost him as Gerald Alexander pins him inside the ten. Well, we recap the first half, and it was decidedly Chicago. They made a statement on defense. 3 3 and out started things for the Lions. A field goal started the scoring. Kitna fumbled the football. 
That big time Bears defense set up a couple of touchdown drives, one by Matt Forte that held up after a few, and then the quick spin move by Devin Hester. Devin Hester's been outstanding in his first NFL start as a receiver today. Four receptions, all of them have come for a TD or a first down. We've got a flag down on the play, and Casey Fitzsimmons being escorted off the field after the kick. Well, that's not how you want to start. If you're the Lions, you get a get one of your tight ends hurt on kickoff coverage. You have an offside by the Lions, which is going to force them to re-kick to Devin Hester after they pin him inside their 10-yard line. And now you've got to run down again on a kickoff and kick the ball to Ooh. Devin Hester. Good thing about punting, you can punt away from Devin Hester. You can't kick away no. on a kickoff from Devin Hester unless you want to kick it out of bounds and give it to him on the 40-yard line. Boy, I'm not sure how many more tight ends the Lions can survive losing. Well, this game, uh, fortunately for them, is not going to be a tight end game. They're going to be in three wides and four wides the rest of the game. They've had to. The only, the only semblance of offense they've shown has been in the four wides. They just haven't been able to sustain it, and that's been the uh, difficult thing for them is sustaining it. So I imagine we're going to see more of the three and the four wides, whether it's no huddle or not. That you got to stretch the Bears out. They cannot line up in a conventional two-back tight end offense and think they're going to move the ball against the Bears. Well, Rod Marinelli lost. Dan Campbell week one Casey Fitzsimmons being escorted off the field in obvious pain here in week five. So the second half re kick to Devin Hester as this one takes a convenient bounce and gives him a full head of steam as he's up to the 29 yard line much better field position for Chicago after the penalty. Quarterback comparison as all the statistical comparisons would be also rather lopsided here guys. And what you don't see there is John Kitten got the ball knocked out of his hands once that led to a score uh, by Chicago. So Kyle Orton doing an excellent job here of taking care of the football and really maximizing you know, his skilled position players right now, whether it's Devin Hester or Matt Forte or Greg Olson. It's Forte in the backfield as Olson resets in front of him. The play action fake. Orton gets out of harm's way and dumps it off. Was the ball caught? It was. Desmond Clark was juggling, but they say he hung on for a Chicago first down. This little athleticism out of Kyle Orton. You don't think of him as an athletic quarterback. You know, what surprised me was sitting with uh, Kyle Orton. He's a big man. Yeah. He, he's a bigger, stronger-looking man than I remember him, certainly, when he was a rookie. First and ten for Chicago at the 39. Hot, hot. Orton surveying his defense again. And he hands it to Forte, who has no gain on the play. Ernie Sims was there to wrap him up in the backfield. You know, Coach, we uh, we spoke with Kyle Orton yesterday. You noticed, you know, the size difference from his rookie year. And rookie year, he goes out and he starts 11 games for the Bears, and they got a monster defense, and he's managing the game. And then he sits for two years. And he's frustrated until the very end last year when he takes advantage of watching and learning. And then he wins the quarterback competition this year. So four years later now, he's a much better player. He's, he's learned by watching. He's learned by playing right now. And now this is his time to really take control of this team. Ernie Sims is the injured lion on the play. Well, what you're talking about, Baldy, is... Uh is the unique situation of starting and then coming back and watching as mm -hmm. opposed to sitting on the bench the entire time. I don't know that you learn anything from that. So, and he did feel like he did learn some things, mm -hmm. you know, because specifically he had started, he knew what he was looking at now that he was watching for two years. So yeah, I, I think he did learn some things. Take a look at what happened on that last play with Sims. Sims, the weak side linebacker comes up to force and set the edge here against Matt Forte, which he does. Looks fine there, shaking his head. He's he got up, kind of grabbing that hamstring. He, it wasn't a hit. He just kind of settled. Looks like his leg gave out just a little bit. He he may have tweaked a bit of a hamstring there. That's what he's or, grabbing. Or he's cramping up. Yeah, one or the yeah. other. Hopefully it's the latter. And he's going right to the water there. Feeling there right there is probably cramped. Let me get some fluids back in me. Now Sims replaced here by the ex Buck Ryan Knee. Second and ten now. When Orton has distributed the ball nicely between his various targets in the first half plus so far. Again, he buys a little time. 
and the pass is caught by Hester out of bounds at the 47 yard line. You know, you talk about Ryan Neese coming in from for Tampa uh, for New, uh, uh, Detroit. Mm -hmm. First, now we're going to see the play. Obviously, it's just a quick, efficient hitch route on the outside. Try to make a double move. Well, you know, what he does is he looks like, you know, whenever there's a scramble drill, one player goes deep, one player goes short. So he acted like he was going to go deep, then came back to the ball. Devin Hester with a career high time, five receptions today, 34 now. Pressure on the backside, pass is caught by Greg Olson, a first down and much more down the sideline and inside the 30. Talked a lot about Matt Forte today. You're going to see you get Greg Olson outside on the wheel route. He picks up some blockers. And then this is a guy, but on the protection side, but watch Matt Forte come over and block a defensive end here. I mean, he's got to hold up there against Jared DeVries for Kyle Orton to get that ball out. We've seen all phases of the game from Matt Forte today. Got that block giving Orton just enough time to complete a 26 yard first down pass. We see Dan Orlovsky getting warm on the sideline for the Lions. First and 10 for Orton. Again, the pocket holds. Orton throws the deep ball in the corner just out of reach, intended for Rasheed Davis. You know, Rod Marinelli brought in a handful of Tampa Bay players. There's seven of them in here. Ryan Neese is in for any Sims right now. And he wanted to set a mentality. He wanted them to basically show these guys, this is how you play this Tampa defense. This is how we practice. This is how we prepare. And frankly, he hasn't gotten the return that he anticipated because all leadership stems eventually from production. Yeah. And I don't know that he's gotten production from these players in his defense. Well, it comes down to evaluation of players because he said we, we brought them in because they're good players first, character guys, and then they can teach, but they haven't performed. So there's an evaluation process here that hasn't been performed. Bernie Sims back on the field and in the gap. Forte is snuffed down in the backfield. Cliff Avril making a start, the rookie third rounder out of Purdue. Now it's time to see what these guys can do. He's been inactive the first three weeks of the season. So let's see what he can do. He made a play behind the line of scrimmage. Haven't had many of those from the Detroit defense today. So it brings up a third and 11 now. Orton has used seven different targets in his passing game so far today. Bears four of eight on third down, and here's Orton out of the shotgun. Here comes the pass rush. And that one is caught with a flag. <laughs> Marty Booker. Ball's just stuck in his hand there. But what the Lester Hayes is going on with that stick of mobility? Well, it, no glove can fit the hands of Marty Booker's hands are too big for even the triple X gloves in this league and that was a one handed palm of that ball. Pass was ruled incomplete. Defensive pass interference. Number 21. Ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. First down. So not a completed pass but a big play for Chicago nonetheless on the penalty charge to Travis Fisher. Well, Marty Booker's just Fisher never sees the ball. There's the pass interference. There's the one handed catch. I guess he didn't possess it all the way to the ground there. Boy, I don't know about that. Look at that ball stuck right there. Can't see it from. Well, it ooh, must have looked like, yeah, from that angle. We can't see if the ball bounced back into his hands or not. You know, Marty Booker was a hundred reception yeah. plus guy uh, back in 2000 season. So he, he is a capable guy, obviously. Uh, and we'll see if the, they want to challenge us. I haven't seen a view yet to see. We haven't seen. If indeed now now Lovey wants to see if that somehow that ball unless we can't see it the official saw the ball bounce off the ground back into it. Now why would you challenge though because they're getting question. the first down on the defensive pass interference is it just to get Marty the catch and to say you know what this effort needs to be rewarded. This this is where the officials got to help you a little bit and say coach do you really want to challenge that. You've got a first down at the one either way. Uh, we'll be back to discuss the merits of the challenge right after this. After reviewing the play, the receiver did make the catch. He went out of bounds at the one and a half yard line. The, de the defensive pass interference is declined. 
First down, Chicago is not charged with a timeout. All right, coach, explain away. Uh, you know, <laughs> to stats. Stat stats. Yeah, you know, Marty Booker. League. Hey, Marty Booker feels better about it. Kyle Orton feels better about it. I'm up 17 to nothing, and I can't take those challenges home with me. They don't add points on at the end. So I realize you could lose the the the, uh, the first down, but he obviously saw the play and figured he had the ball. Support the player. Player said, "I caught it, coach. Let him prove me wrong." An unbelievable reception by Marty Booker makes this a career yardage pass. Who almost ruined it by throwing the pick in the end zone? Calvin Pearson had that right in the breadbasket. Well, Desmond Clark was outside here. He's playing wide receiver, and he gets bumped off the route. Didn't get back inside. It's up to the receiver to get back inside because that ball is thrown. That was a great jam yeah. by the cornerback. They're just looking on the size mismatch here, and he should have won that mismatch. Fought his way through it. Great jam. This is Forte, and this is another Chicago touchdown. I saw Matt Forte yesterday, Matt, and I said, so all of the fantasy players out there, did they after that first week, that big game against Indianapolis, they all wanted you, didn't they? And this is uh, piling on some of those statistics right here. It's a good push right here up front. I mean, right there, there's some softness there. That's what you're looking for. Nice little crease. Step through almost untouched. Nine plays, 71 yards, and the second touchdown of the afternoon for Matt Forte. One in the air, one on the ground, and everything is going the way of the visiting Bears this afternoon in the Motor City. So, how's my day look? The game here in place of John Kitna with 11-17 left here in the third quarter. And why not? Why not? I mean, you're down 24 to nothing. The, the difficult thing is, is now that you're going to that change, what happens next week? Is this just temporary? Is this to get you out of the game? Or is this the change you got to go to for the season? Brandon Middleton deep. He'll start to return to the end zone. Middleton out across the 10, bump back, flag down. And Middleton himself is down at the 12. Holding number 87. Receiving team, half the distance to the goal. Mike Furry guilty of the hold. It will be Orlovsky instead of Kitna when we come back. Hey, Mr. Going very wrong for the Lions. John Kitna has been benched in favor of Orlovsky here with 11 08 left in the third quarter. The fifth rounder out of UConn back in 2005 has received precious little playing time in the NFL. And they start him on the ground with Rudy Johnson as we check in with Laura Oakman. Well, I will tell you guys this. We heard the fans cheering when Orlovsky came in, but I talked to a lot of offensive players this week and said, is it time to make a quarterback change? Every one of them said no. We feel that our best chance to win is John Kitna. We don't think these two backups are ready yet. Well, Laura, thanks. In the case of Drew Stanton, who is the third, the former Michigan State star, I think it's clear that he's not ready. He's coming off knee surgery and really hasn't even practiced much in his year plus with the Lions. It's going to be Orlovsky's game here. Play fake, and he just gets it off to the rookie fullback, Jerome Felton, who carries Kevin Payne with him and then loses the football at the end of the play. Was it, in fact, whistled dead? Mike Brown's got the ball in his hands. Chicago football. And I think Coach Marinelli may be feeling for his red challenge flag. Well, the question is, when he went down, did he roll through onto the ground as the ball came out? No, oh, no. no. He rolled over the he top right of paint. The top. So he was never on the ground. And the ball came right out. You, 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 this is one of those things. What the heck? Maybe you challenge it anyway. Just to, maybe they see it differently. Maybe I mean at this point, uh, what the heck? Detroit is challenging the ruling on the field. Maybe there's an angle there that uh, the football gods will give you that uh, give the ball back to you. But I doubt it. Well, they haven't been very kind to the Lions so far this afternoon. Well, under review here is whether or not 
Jerome Felton lost the football after that quick screen and near first down reception. He was dragging strong after safety. After reviewing the play, the runner's helmet touched. He was down by contact prior to losing possession of the ball. The ball will be placed at the 14-yard line. It'll be third down, three yards to go. Detroit is not charged a timeout. Well, there, uh, you know, it looked uh, one way to, to all of us. There's no question we thought it was so. Yeah, you had no reason to believe it was going to be anything different, but Rod Marinelli, why not throw the flag? Maybe by some stroke of fate, you you uh, get the ball back, and that's exactly what happened. How many times is it the helmet A helmet first? equals two feet, or an elbow equals one helmet, and a, uh, what is that? Hel I forget. Yeah, that's... No, yeah. yeah. A yeah. helmet two equals feet. two feet. And how many times is it the helmet first on the down by contact that reverses a, uh, a challenge that way? So it's the first break, really, that the Lions have gotten. It's their first successful challenge of the season. They still have to convert on third down. Third and three for Dan Olofsky. And he'll put it in the air. That one back away and intercepted Charles Tillman. His second pick of the season. Touchdown, Lot Bears. Uh, Charles Tillman's right shoulder feels a lot better now. A 25-yard touchdown return after the INT. Well, they're going to throw the slant to Roy Williams. We've got both hands on it. This ball, this is, he gets the clearance. I mean, I don't know what else you could do. He threw the ball. That's, that's the wide receiver's job. I mean, it's thrown right to him. Right there, it bounces off him, and Charles Tillman is the lucky recipient there. His body language made it look like it was just coming in too hot. There was just too much on it. Now, I'm not making excuses for Roy Williams. Robbie Gold is a PAT away from making this a 31-0 route for the Bears. And it's Charles Tillman's second career inner turn reception for TD that makes this 31-0 Chicago. The infrastructure in the Galveston-Houston area from Hurricane Ike and Gustav. For more information, log on to Bush Clinton Coastal Fund. One word, Bush Clinton Coastal Fund. Dot org. What to do to uh, rebuild the infrastructure here in Detroit? They're down 31 nothing with uh, plenty of time left in the second half. And I guess the glass half full fan, and it would have to be really full. So would the fan. Good points of the 34.4 quarter last year that the Lions achieved against the Bears defense. Uh, you can't really count on 34.4 quarters every Sunday, and the Lions are up against it here today. Well, look, in the bye week, they released their general manager and president, Matt Millen, and they thought, not that that was supposed to give them a lift or anything, but kind of satisfy the fans that we're doing something here. Matt was the fall guy. But at this point here, I mean, clearly this is a poorly coached team right now. They're not executing at any level. So you go, what can we do next to sort of give us any kind of a lift right here? Because they're, they're, they're flat, they're at home, they're being shut out again. This is a tough situation. Well, and they changed the quarterback position on top of it. Dan Orlowski, I'm sure this was not the uh, start he envisioned when he was going to get his chance to come in and play. And, uh, you know, when we, let, when we sat there with John Kitna yesterday, or the other day, and you brought up the point, Baldy, that, well, aren't you glad you're playing the Bears now? You know, because that, that you know kind of adversity opponent. brings focus. And his eyes kind of crossed, and he said, it's never a good time to play the Bears. And, and we can see why, because they have not had any answer for them at all. Handoff to Rudy Johnson went nowhere, so second and ten now for Orlovsky. We mentioned that Dan Orlovsky has received precious few NFL game snaps. Thrown only 22 passes in his career before coming in here. That little pass is caught by Calvin Johnson short of the first down. Now, Roy Williams has complained uh, about not getting the ball thrown to him, and uh, he's got all the answers for what they need to do offensively. Yeah, the ball's high and behind me, but at some point, you know, if this team's got any future at all, if he's got any future, not just with this team in the league, you've got to take responsibility. What can I do to help this team out of this malaise? One of those things, just look in the mirror. I mean, that's where you start. Third and two, and the last is passed this time. Say the body language on Roy Williams is not the kind of body language that would even make a high school coach accepting of it. 
he's just he's just clearly not into it here whether it's Orlovsky or Kitten or whomever and it's well documented that that he is going to be out of contract uh, he may be someplace else next year he's got to be conscious just from a selfish standpoint of who, who wants this guy on your team you just, know the, the league sees the gloves off and so you've got to uh, you, you know you got to be a little smarter than that. Nick Harris punting it away to Devin Hester who pauses before starting the return and is knocked back inside the 25 balls out and the Lions have recovered. Well they've been trying to get a turnover all day. Devin Hester a little careless right here. Nice job there by Daniel Bullocks of getting it and Ramsey Robinson on top of it and it's a special team that actually create the only big momentous play all day for the Lions. Well, the first time the Bears have given it away here this afternoon. That's the only thing that's gone wrong for Devin Hester today in what has otherwise been an outstanding week five Sunday. So the Lions will begin the drive after the turnover at the 22 of Chicago. Steps up in the pocket and dumps it off to his rookie tailback Kevin Smith, who gets maybe a yard. Well, this is where Chicago, their their red two or red zone two defense, which is, could be a quasi cover two, it could be a four cross zone, with an inexperienced quarterback, they can be lethal because you're throwing the ball in where you think it should go. Orlovsky's got to do something to get him in the end zone. But this is a defense that uh, thrives on trapping quarterbacks and making mistakes. Well, you've got to believe with the inexperienced signal caller, the likes of Agunlier and Erlacher, the Brooks are licking their chops here. Second and seven. First time the Lions have been in the red zone all day. And that pass caught to the rookie fullback, Jerome Felton. And Orlowski's being smart here. He, he checked to something there. They, the defense then checked to a passive zone. He saw he was going to get what he intended, and he's dropped the ball off a couple times now, and they are moving the ball down the field. They're getting it inside or close to the 10-yard line. So, uh, so far, he's doing the right thing. You can't force the ball. And it looks like the linebacker, Nick Roach, the former Northwestern standout, is down on the play. Roach has gotten some playing time uh, over uh, Hunter Hillemeyer, who's been a big part of the Chicago Bear uh, linebacking triumvirate. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, like, they like what this guy's done because in order to take a Hillemeyer uh, off the field and put a Roach in, that tells you something about what they think this young man can do. And part of the package today was to play four linebackers. Lovey Smith telling us yesterday that he was going to be working in there and in some cases playing all four at the same time. Well, tonight on Fox, don't miss an outrageous all-new episode of Family Guy. Animation Domination is back with an all-new episode of Family Guy starting at 9, 8 central right here on Fox. Viewer discretion is advised. Pride of Quahog. Take a look at what happened to Roach again. He goes low on Felton. Felton's a load. He's about 270 pounds. Then he gets kicked on top by Corey Graham. While we have a moment, let's quickly check in with Kurt Menefee in Los Angeles. Well, guys, the Lions are looking for a quarterback. Maybe they should try Antoine Randall L. One at the University of Indiana, or Indiana University. Now as a pro, wide receiver has thrown four touchdown passes. That one to Chris Cooley gave them the lead at Philly, 16-14 in the third quarter. Back to Detroit, Matt and the Killer Bees. Coach, that's one way to trip up Jimmy Johnson, right? Yeah, get it outside and uh, uh, see if you can just trick him, although you're not going to make a living trying to trick Jimmy Johnson too often. <laughs> Kevin Smith in the backfield now with Orlovsky. And Smith, the ball carrier, changing directions, finding a seam, and finding the end zone. A 12-yard TD run, Kevin Smith's second of this rookie season. Boy, good vision by Kevin Smith here, coach. 
Because this is all him. He sees the backside open up, picks up a little block from Calvin Johnson. The rest of him was all his vision. Well, and a good cutback carried his back. He was, no matter who was going to be there, he was going to be denied that, that end zone. He was going to drop his shoulder, run through him, whatever he had to do to get his first scoring touchdown in the NFL. And was ticked that they had put Rudy Johnson in front of him last week in that loss to San Francisco. The nation's leading rusher last year at Central Florida. He gets the Lions on the scoreboard. The point after makes it 31 7 Chicago. Thursday, a reminder game one of the National League Championship Series. Manny Ramirez has been incredible. He and the Dodgers will battle either the Fighting Phils or the Milwaukee Brewers. One will move on to the World Series. Coverage of the NLCS begins Thursday, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. Game one in high definition, only on Fox. And again, it's looking more and more like. Uh, Charlie Manuel and the Phillies will be that Dodger opponent as they have a five to one lead in the seventh at Miller Park in Milwaukee today. You know we the Lions heart turnovers 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 now this game is is out of control here but really they get the first turnover today and then they capitalize off and they get a touchdown. You go back to last year when they did get off to a good start they did have 24 turnovers in the first eight games and that's what they were feeding off of. That's what this defense is built around. And they haven't been creating. They've got it on a special teams. And here they are on the board as a result. Well, the key we'll see, does this energize the Detroit Lion team? Mm -hmm. Do we see it in the coverage team? Do we see the defense come up and have that little bit of spark about them that says, we're going to be professionals. We're going to show that we're better than what we've shown up to this point. It was Devin Hester's fumble on the last punt return that set up the score by the Lions. Here's Hester inside the five. And down shy of the 20 yard line. Robinson. Kyle Orton has been superb this afternoon. 20 of 26, a career high 288 yards and two touchdown tosses. Now he was quick to credit his quarterbacks coach when we spoke with him yesterday Pep Hamilton who has spent a lot of time working with Kyle Orton on footwork he's more relaxed when he drops back he's more in balance he has played extremely well this afternoon with Kevin Jones in the backfield on first and 10 from the 19. Tuck and roll grab made by Rashid Davis. Well, Kyle Orton's done it all today, and he's thrown every kind of pass needed. Nice lofting pass, Greg Olson over the top, threw uh, an outside uh, cover two shot to Devin Hester, dropped the ball over uh, down underneath to Matt Forte, another rail shot on the outside. Uh, he's been accurate with every throw with just the right amount of spin, just the right amount of loft on it. Very impressive day for Kyle Orton. Second and five. Jones the lone back here for Chicago. And the pitch is to the X line. He tries to change directions and gets around the outside for a first down. Finally tackled by Cliff Avril. Well, that's an example to see that Kevin Jones is getting some of his speed back after two major injuries to be able to come all the way to the right, stop, change directions against a defense that has speed on it. And then to be able to pick up that first down. Ten yard pickup by Jones. And it's first and ten from the 34. And they need Kevin Jones to start giving those kind of runs, that type of effort to stay healthy, to spell Matt Forte. Because you can't expect the rookie to keep going week after week with the number of touches he's been piling up. Keeps adding on to a career yardage on this afternoon. Time clicking and clock ticking rather at 530 here. And this time Jones is met head on. You know, you like the rotation here too. And, and coach, we talked earlier about all the touches that that Forte was getting, and it's been a steady diet of Jones here since the intermission. I, I, that's a smart thing to do because Matt Forte clearly is a huge part of this offense. And you start approaching that 25 touches a game, you're you're getting into that 400 touches a year category that may have a negative effect in December and what very well could be a January run. Yeah, you need him the most. Jones still on the field on second and ten there. Play clock down to three. And the pass 
pass caught by Jones just past the 35. A two yard gain. An injury update on Nick Roach who was escorted off the field moments ago and officially it's a left shoulder injury that has him out of the game. Now he went low on the fullback felt you so knocked him out but this is key third down here for this Lions defense if they want to keep trying to build a little bit of momentum here in the second half. That's five of nine on third down. Orton with plenty of room to run and he has another Chicago first down. Doing it all this afternoon. You know, and the Lions reset. One of the things that the Lions wanted to do was to contain this quarterback when he comes outside here. Now you can see, now here's the rookie. Avril comes inside. There's no contain on that outside. The rookie goes in, Avril inside, and then Kyle Orton comes outside. And what we talked about was contain the quarterback. And well, that's one of the things that has struggled, and this defense has struggled with all year. Detroit 0 of 8. Kevin, Kevin, third down. Chicago 6 of 10, 60 percent. We're not going to beat anybody with those numbers. Working with a play fake. Look for the deep ball and finally just throws it away. But he gave Greg Olson some serious consideration deep. And then when he came off, as he came off, he, he saw his check down guy was covered as well and under dress threw the ball away. That was a great no play by Kyle Orton. Coach, in this style of defense, your front four has got to win. I mean, this is basically five offensive linemen against four defensive linemen. They don't get to Kyle Orton, Orton until very late in that play. But he's got way too much time to throw the football here. If your front four and his defense can't get there, it's hard to play this defense well. Garrett Wolf is a deep back for Chicago now in second and ten. And he'll take the pitch. Wolf tackled at midfield as we check in in Los Angeles with Kurt Menefee. Well, the Packers picked off Matt Ryan in the end zone, and the Packer offense turns it into points. Aaron Rodgers zips this one in to Greg Jennings, 25-yard score, and the game's all tied at 17. It's a good one in the fourth quarter. Back to Matt and the Killer Bees plus Flora. In Atlanta going up, I got uh, the Chicago Atlanta game next week. And Atlanta to go up to Green Bay yeah. and make that the game that they've got going right now. Atlanta's been very impressive. We're former defensive line coach Mike Smith doing a good job in his first year. Third and six for the Bears from midfield. Pocket holds up for Orton again. Here's his deep ball for Davis, and it's overthrown. Lee Bodden had him covered step for step. One thing about this Bears offense, even you know, with this 31-7 lead, but throughout the first five weeks now, they have not been afraid to throw the ball down the field. And whether it's been Brandon Lloyd when he's been healthy to Devin Hester, it is a part of what Ron Turner, the offensive coordinator, wants to do. And last year, they were a more explosive team than people gave them credit for. They were 10th or 11th in the league in plays of over 20 yards. And I don't think the people think of the Bears in that regard. And they're continuing to try to, to keep that ratio here with this group. Mike Furry deep for the Maynard punt. You know, it's been a real credit to Ron Turner because before the season started, the only thing you heard about the Bears passing game was who was going to throw it and then who was going to catch it. They had a quarterback competition in camp, and, and a lot of their marquee talented wide receiver left Chicago at the end of the season. Oh, yeah. There's no question that uh, the group is better than anybody thought, and they're getting great production out of Marty Booker coming back after being in Miami for four years. Total uh, domination here today uh, by the Bears in that offense, defense as well. But yeah, I mean, Rasheed Davis has come in, you know, a former Arena League player. Devin Hester now, full time and wide receiver. Uh, and the tight ends, we haven't even seen the rookie yet, Kellen Davis, who is going to be a part of this package before, before the end of the season. Approaching two minutes here in the third quarter. Orlovsky hands it off to Rudy Johnson. Drags Brian Erlacher with him across the 20. Well, we're not at the point where, where Detroit has to just throw the ball every down. You've got plenty of time with a full quarter and two minutes to go to keep a balanced offense if you choose, but but you got to move the ball. I mean, you, you've got to, you've got to at some point 
move the ball in a consistent manner. And if they don't continue it on with this drive, then they're pretty much going to have to get it pushed into a three or four wides throw, throw, throw mode. And we're throwing against defense that's two safeties deep. Incomplete again. And Roy Williams begging for a flag. He's going to get it this time. Yeah, I think the DB rode him a little bit too long on that one. You got to get your hands on a big receiver like Roy Williams off the line of scrimmage, and I think he maintained contact just a little too long. Holding defense, number 26, five yard penalty, automatic first down. Second year corner, Tremaine McBride guilty of the hold, and it'll be a first down for the Lions. Tremaine McBride getting playing time today with the injury to Nathan Vasher. Should be back next week. There's some minor surgery to his hand. McBride got a lot of time last year with with a banged up secondary. You know, let's face it, there, there was some vulnerability today defensively for Chicago. Tommy Harris suspended, Vasher not out there, but that Bears defense, because it's a scheme defense, they'd like to tell you, has really held up just fine today. Olofsky with a play fake, and that was almost intercepted. Hunter Hillenmeyer went up as high as he could possibly go. And it's interesting. Uh, as we see the throw here, he's simply trying to get the ball in behind the linebacker level. Underestimates the drop of Dvorak or Helen Hunter there, excuse me, and uh, almost turned it into an interception. It's interesting though to hear Lovey Smith when we talk about they didn't like that Tampa two label. You know, no, no, that's a generic two. terminal, and he they bristled up with that. No, they, we're not a Tampa two. This is a bear two. <laughs> Second and ten now for Orlovsky. And he dumps it off to Rudy Johnson. For the Lions leaders on a day like today, if, if there can be such a thing, Orlovsky five of eight, Rudy Johnson five carries for 23 yards, and, and Roy Williams, his afternoon has been perhaps more noteworthy with the plays that he hasn't made as opposed to the three catches he has made today. Yeah, those 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 would be impressive first quarter numbers. Or <laughs> maybe first drive. That's where we first were. drive numbers. <laughs> we keep showing Roy Williams, but I mean here's Calvin Johnson up here who's been almost invisible today. Play clock winding down and Orlovsky just gets it off. He steps up in the pocket and throws incomplete. Williams continues his disgust. Well, and to have these two receivers, Calvin Johnson and Roy Williams, he said they were going to have to be the guys you go to to beat the Chicago Bears because you weren't going to run on them. And uh, these numbers just aren't going to cut it. And, and it's not like they've sat in cover two all day. It's not like you ha haven't had the one on one matchups on the outside, just like that last play. That ball bounced off the turf, so it didn't get close to getting it. Hester calls for the fair catch, and the Bears will take over at the 31 yard line with 30 seconds left here in the third quarter. Already the eighth punt of the ball game by the Lions. Boy, some great matchups coming up on Fox in the month of October and early November. Next Sunday, Dallas at Arizona on the 19th. It'll be the 49ers at the Meadowlands, October 26th, Giants and Steelers. And then we'll open the month of November with that big Dallas Giants matchup in New York. Dallas had a receiver that seemed a little disgruntled this week. Terrell Owens not getting the ball enough. So he says. T.O. disgruntled. Gosh, I missed that. <laughs> you're, you're, you're telling me he's not pleased with his quarterback or the current structure of getting the ball to him? They only tried to get the ball to him 19 times last week, Ryan. It wasn't enough. Sean Springs bodied him, bumped him. Ball bounced off his face mask last week. But him and Chad Ochocinco can fight over the number of touches later today. In the history of big Family Guy guest stars, no one can survive a, a duplication of the 34-point fourth that the Lions put on them last year. They seem on their way toward a 3-2 and two start to the season. As the Bears start play here in the fourth on the ground with Kevin Jones near midfield. 
Well, and the Bears, it'll be interesting to see their approach. They've been very, very balanced. They put the ball up down the field. Obviously, uh, Matt Forte, you can see the progression that he's had uh, in his first five games, the regression. Uh, and uh, But still, his impact on yeah, this no offense doubt. goes without saying. Well, the last game, Forte, you've got to be good at something. Uh, given that type of uh, Second and eight. Three seconds left on the play. Block Orton's pass is caught a wide open. Rasheed Davis for another Chicago first down. Let's check in on the field with Laura Oakman. Ears for a second, guys, because if you would check out the Bears parking lot, you would see a lot of Escalades, Mercedes, BMWs, but you would also see one Prius, and that one Prius, that one hybrid, belongs to Kyle Orton, who's very active in helping save the environment. He talks publicly, he conserves at home, and even help implement a recycling program at Hallis Hall, the Bears training facility. So I just wanted to say he's my kind of quarterback, saving the Bears' offense and the earth at the same time. <laughs> All He's right. saving on razor blades as well because he <laughs> doesn't shave. Yeah. <laughs> First and ten for Orton as he pitches back to Jones. Let's get back to Kyle Orton for a moment because I, I'm not quite sure, guys, what an NFL quarterback is supposed to look and act like, but I'm pretty sure that, that Kyle Orton doesn't fit that traditional build. He, you know, he looks more like a guy that came down from the IT department to fix your laptop. Uh, than he does, you know, a guy who excels as an NFL quarterback. We asked him about the beard yesterday, too, and he said it's it's Neil O'Donnell inspired, which yeah. threw me for a little loop. Well, he's got a demeanor about him, about like a guy that is going to win. I mean, there he's was focused. a calm, very focused, very confident in his abilities. And above all else, the quarterback has to have that. Time. Second and eight, the Bears keep it on the ground with Jones. You know, it's interesting because he was a fourth round pick out of Purdue, and if you look at the guys that he was chasing at Purdue as far as career numbers, Drew Brees was in front of him. But when you come out as a fourth rounder and you don't have that look, you know, that a lot of guys have that they look for, you're fighting an uphill battle. Then you then you come and you start as a rookie on a defensive dominated team and you don't get a real opportunity with a lot of talent around you to air it out. But he has not stopped thinking about becoming the starting quarterback for the Chicago Bears. He's got a good coach and a good system right now. He won the competition with Rex Grossman, and I think the results are paying dividends right now with where he's come from and what he's capable of doing. Third and six for Orton out of the gun. And that one caught by Davis at the 10. And they're saying no catch. Davis was unable to hang on, so that's incomplete. That, that was a big-time throw. That was a big-time throw. And, and uh, Rasheed Davis... This is one of those. This is the only place you could put it because yep. this is good coverage. I leap out and it's just out far enough ahead. It wasn't too low. Uh, very, very catchable. Now, Rasheed Davis is just now being put into a starting lineup for them. These two were working out a, a great deal in pregame warm up. You could tell Kyle Orton, who probably hasn't had a lot of reps with Rasheed Davis, was still, even in pregame, working one on one to say, look, let's let we need to get on rhythm here. This would be a season long for Robbie Gold from 45. He's been good from 37 today and adds the 45 yarder. Bears pouring it on. 11.58 left in regulation, 34 7 Chicago. Bears on top of the Lions at Ford Field, 34 7 with 11.58 left in regulation. Back with Brian Billiken, Brian Baldinger, Matt Vaskersian. Bears are hoping for uh, for some kind of help in the north as well. Packers trailing in the fourth quarter at this moment as Brandon Middleton takes a knee. And Dan Orlovsky in the offense will give it another shot when we come back. And Dan Orlovsky will try to use these remaining minutes here this afternoon to, uh, to gain some valuable experience and perhaps put some feel-good touches on what has otherwise been a very disappointing day for Lions fans. First and ten for Detroit. Here's Orlovsky out of the shotgun. And a dump off to Smith. Boy, he paid the price as that one floated. By his own man. Dominic right in right well, the Roy Williams uh, is much talked about where he is on the offense and how many times he's getting the ball. Um, and obviously it's not gone well. And, and to separate yourself from the team emotionally, physically, mentally, 
Uh, that's where they're at right now. Very well right now. Here's yeah. another miscommunication there. This is what Roy Williams, the 12 attempts, actually 13 after that last one. Another uncatchable ball, but the three small catches, four drops, and a bunch of timing routes that just aren't there between Roy, and this time Orlovsky was with Kitten in the first half. It's going to be plenty of fodder for the talk radio people around here all week because there was some discussion during the bye week about the impending trade deadline and the fact that Roy Williams does not have a deal to stay with me on the season. Would he be a guy that they move? And Roy Williams responded by saying, I'm not even sure what they get for him if they make such a deal. Orlovsky down center field. Williams is here to make the play this time with a flag on the play. Well, that's what he's capable of doing right there in the middle of the field taking a hit from the safety Mike Brown personal foul face mask defense number 44 15 yard penalty from the end of the play first down well we've talked about before that you can roll to speed roll coverage up to speed take away a deep threat you can bracket uh, quickness but size and athleticism like these two young men have, mm -hmm. uh, that's a tough one because they've got it all. And those are the type of plays they're capable of, but they've got to be there on a consistent basis. And there's just not a lot of guys like that out here in the league. With the penalty, that moves the football 41 yards well into Chicago territory. So from the 37 of the Bears. that pass earlier in the series on a miscommunicated route. Now I, we have no idea what was called and what was supposed to happen but we saw that with John Kitna and Roy Williams. We see it with Dan Orlovsky. We see this with Dan Orlovsky and Dan Williams uh, uh, and, and, and uh, uh, Roy Williams. You know at some point it's well I've never seen it that many times in one game. Yeah. What, one what, receiver. What ever. is it that's confusing us here. What is it you're seeing and I'm seeing that's making us uh, do this. Second and ten. Delayed handoff to Smith and he is tackled by Alex Brown for a loss. Now this ought to be a classic down and distance where you would think the Bears would be in kind of an umbrella zone. Mm -hmm. It's a third and long and use the size of Calvin Johnson who we have not heard from except for what one play in the mm -hmm. first half. Roy Williams find an area between the hash and the numbers to drop it into a voided zone and let them use their size and athleticism to go get it. Lions have converted only one of ten third down tries third and nine. Johnson who's tackled at the 30 short of the first down. Clearly they've, they've got to go for this. There'd be no. Yeah. And Dan Orlowski's kind of saying don't bring the field goal team in. Well you know what Dan. How about you let the coaches decide that. They know what they're doing. You have what 10 snaps in your career now. <laughs> and uh, and just line up and uh, run the play they uh, call. Well Rod Marinelli one of two in fourth down conversion so far this year. They'll give it a shot here on fourth and three. Looked like he may have had it on the catch and then kind of stepped back behind it. And Furry is still down after the reception. Well, he run, he's playing the running this route to the sticks here, coach, where to the red line here. We're a little pivot route. Trying to get away from Briggs, that's going back. Ooh, he takes a shot right from Mike Brown, he snapped his neck back. Furry okay to get off under his own power, and the Lions turn it over on downs. a big 34 7 Chicago will try to chew up as much time as they can here with 931 left in regulation Garrett Wolf enters into the contest at tailback he's the ball carrier and right up the middle again of three 
Well, the Bears have had an outstanding offensive afternoon, led, of course, by Kyle Orton, a career best 315 passing yards. Matt Forte was featured prominently before halftime, and Greg Olson has added three receptions for 87 yards. Well, those numbers don't indicate the impact Matt Forte had the first half of this game. He, he was a huge part of what they were able to do in the first half. And touchdowns both receiving and rushing in this game for him. Wolf again to loan back on second and seven. And no gain on this carry as we check in with Kurt Menefee in Los Angeles. Well, the Packers were driving, trying to take the lead against Atlanta, closing minutes, but Aaron Rodgers gets picked off by Michael Boley, and that sets the Falcons up nicely. Michael Turner led the league in rushing and touchdowns coming in, scores another. Atlanta up by 10, less than three minutes left. And when your game is done, guys, we'll take you to the conclusion of Washington and Philadelphia. That one a six-point game in the closing minutes, if you should finish before they do. Greg, Kurt, thanks. Uh, have we heard enough about the, the improvement that the Atlanta Falcons have made this year? They're playing some very good football here in the first quarter of the season. And to go to Lambeau Field, that's the first, this could be their first home victory. That would be huge for this new organization. Rasheed Davis makes a first down reception again inside Lions territory again of 19. Now, if you're a Lion fan and you look at what the Atlanta Falcons have done with a new general manager, Tom Dimitrov, and a new head coach and Mike Smith in one year, free agency Michael Turner, through the draft, you go out and get Matt Ryan and Sam Baker starting on, on the offense for him and how quickly they have turned it around. Well, that's what this league's about. You can do that in today's free agency league. And Atlanta deserves a lot of credit for the moves they've made. Comes down to personnel and getting the right personnel. This is Gary Wolf again on the pitch, dancing for a couple of yards and tripped up at the 45. You know, Chicago wants to create a, a persona. We heard Lovey Smith talk about the quarter, first quarter mm -hmm. of the season and, and a personality. The fact that they're throwing the ball in this situation, balanced up. They're not trying to run it up. They're not mm -hmm. trying to embarrass anybody. They're trying to establish a personality. We are an offense that can be counted on. We know we've got a good defense. This is our guy, Kyle Orton. Uh, we're missing our best receiver. Uh, this is as much a statement as, as anything else that they could do. Hot, hot. And making a statement by suspending Tommy Harris today. Trying to light a fire under him coming back next week. Garrett Wolf tackled just short of the first down. A reminder coming up after football, watch the top 45 bull riders in the world compete at the professional bull riders built Ford Tough Series U.S. Air Force Invitational. Don't miss all the action after football right here on Fox. Check local listings for the start time in your area. Hey, Coach, uh, one of the other things that, they've, that they have going for them here in the second half of this part of the season is Chris Williams, the number one pick. That was injured, had back surgery, is now practicing with the team, and we'll be looking forward to getting him into the lineup and upgrading the offense line as the season goes forward. Third and three. And Orton throws for Hester incomplete. Now, and when you, to pick up on that, Baldy, when you look at, I mean, Chicago was a two and two team, but when you look at who they play, mm -hmm. and we're talking about Indy, Carolina, Tampa Bay, Philly. Good defenses. They're, they're at Detroit. They're at Atlanta. Now, that's four out of your six. Your mm -hmm. opening six on the road, which means you're going to get that on the back end. Right. They go down, and obviously Atlanta's a good football team. We're fun in that. But to, to open up against that caliber of team, yeah, they could have been 4-0. They could have been 0-4, and you'd have understood it against that caliber of competition. They've been tested in the first quarter of the season. Punt out of bounds at the seven-yard line. 544 left. Lovey Smith knows he's close to three and two. Dan Orlovsky certainly wishes that this uh, on the job training could come under different circumstances. His Lions down 34 to seven here in the fourth quarter. And Orlovsky begins the drive deep in his own territory from the Detroit 10. In all Chicago this afternoon here at Ford Field. And that pass caught out of bounds incomplete. 
Well, happier times and more optimism before the game, guys, when uh, owner and chairman William Clay Ford was on the field with Rod Marinelli. Well, the Fords have been incredible owners. They're, they've been loyal to, to a fault, some would say, if, if loyalty can be a fault. Uh, and they've deserved better than what they've had. This is 51 straight sellouts. Mm -hmm. This building's been sold out ever since they built it. Uh, the Fords are a committed group of people. They obviously have a job in front of them to decide what it is they're going to do at the end of the season to get this franchise pointing in the right direction. Kevin Smith picks up nine on the second down carry. It'll bring up third and short. You know, I think it's important to point out that, that as much as we want to do it, it's no one individual's fault. Uh, it really is to go forward as an organization. It's very easy to say, well, it was Matt Millen's fault. It's Rod Marinelli's fault. It's, the, it's whatever. Uh, you've got to create a partnership going forward. Whatever whatever structure you have going forward, by general manager, head coach, however you're going to do it, it needs to be a solid partnership and it needs to be built together. Third and two here for the Lions. Clock ticking under five minutes now. Big pass rush still coming, and there's a first down reception made by Roy Williams. Took a pretty good shot by Adewale Agunlier. Well, who was untouched and came clean at Dan Orlovsky, and I give Orlovsky credit right here because he just got his bell rung by Awale Agunlier and got the ball off. Williams again. And taken down quickly by Mike Brown. I'm still amazed that uh, uh, there's no problem with going to Mike Williams, but how uh, Charles Johnson has just disappeared. Or Calvin Johnson, excuse me. It, it just, it's not like they're even looking for him. I don't know if that's by design or whether it doesn't look like they're rolling coverages to him, but Calvin Johnson is a force. And, and not that Mike, or excuse me, Roy Williams isn't, but um, it just doesn't seem like they're even looking to Calvin Johnson. Well, is that play calling right there, Coach, where he's not the number one receiver and they can't find him? Or because, really, I mean, Roy was complaining two weeks ago about him not getting the ball and Calvin Johnson was getting it, but they didn't look to Calvin Johnson in the loss to San Francisco. You go through the bye week, come back, and they don't really look like they have a game plan for him. Well, you know, they say there's a squeaky wheel gets the grease. <laughs> Sometimes a squeaky wheel gets replaced. Yeah. Uh, and, and why they're not going to uh, Calvin Johnson is, uh, I don't know, I don't know the answer. There he was in the slot. Instead, the pass goes to Roy Williams for a first down. Corey Graham makes the tackle. Well, a few times today that they've actually lined up on the same side of the field together, Roy Williams and Calvin Johnson. That time, Calvin Johnson running the, uh, the coverage off and letting Roy come underneath. See some final scores rolling at the top right hand corner of your screen and they include Miami upsetting San Diego 17 10 Dolphins was the final. That one's batted down to the line of scrimmage. That one was intended for, uh, for Calvin Johnson so maybe they're listening. Well, that time Roy Williams off the field and out of the game so he went to Calvin Johnson. And I hope that's not what it is. I hope the quarterbacks aren't trying to force the ball to Roy Williams so that they can avoid the, the grief they would get during the week uh, uh, by, by not going to. Williams again taking a seat here on second and ten. And that will be thrown intended for Brandon Middleton. So a score that'll, uh, that'll please Bears fans. Atlanta on top of the Packers 27-24 with inside of two minutes left in regulation. Well, this is the Bears' first division game here this year. Five left to play, two of them against the Packers. Certainly their goal at the outset of the season was to win the NFC North. But at the end of today, we'll have a 3-2 and two record at least to share it. With well, an NLCS graphic, when it comes up on the screen, I think everybody in Chicago just kind of swallows as Orlovsky dumps it off complete to Rudy Johnson. Folks in Chicago were hoping that they'd have their Cubs represented. They were hoping that uh, some were hoping their White Sox would be represented. Yeah. They're up against it, down 2-0 in that best of five against the Tampa Rays. So maybe, uh, maybe in what looked like a fall filled with baseball in the Windy City, Chicago Bears football will kick itself back on the front page. Well, in the NFC, only the Seattle Seahawks has won as many games as the Chicago Bears over the last five years. 
I mean, they have won the division a couple of times. They've gotten to a Super Bowl. They've been in the playoffs. Fun to rebound from the disappointing season a year ago. On fourth and seven, down goes Orlovsky out of Wally Agunlie. Gosner Churlis now, again, kind of gets schooled here. Now, you know they can just pin their ears backs and go. But it's much like we saw earlier in the uh, early in the uh, game. He just drops his shoulder. Churlis is way too high. Gumlier drops his shoulder underneath and gets home to the quarterback. Well, Rudy Johnson has to help him out there, coach. He's coming out. I mean, you got to chip him there, put a shoulder into him. He whiffed on it. He didn't help his tackle out at all. This is what we're talking about right here. I mean, Rudy Johnson here on his way out. I mean, he's got to take a piece of just whiffed right there. Didn't want any part of it. And if the tackle's expecting that chip mm -hmm. by that back, uh, he wasn't expecting that. I'm not trying to take the, the onus off of, of Churlis, but he was expecting more of a chip from from uh, Smith. Well, you hear a little surge in the stands. A lot of Bears fans here in Detroit this afternoon, and they're responding to Rex Grossman being inserted in at quarterback. His day will likely consist of handing off as he pitches back to Garrett Wolf for no gain. Let's check in on the field with Laura Oakman. Gentlemen, we talked earlier about Anthony Adams and how emotional this game was going to be for him with his father watching him play football in person for the first time ever. I just want to say it's going to get even more emotional after the game. Lovey Smith telling us yesterday that the game ball was going to be given to Anthony for everything he's gone through and how he's handled it. He is the heart of that locker room. They say he is the one that keeps it light in there. And uh, I have a feeling it's going to get even more emotional for him already. A pretty, pretty amazing day. Well, Lauren, thanks. And uh, Anthony Adams will be two minutes away from that emotion as we have reached the two minute warning here at Ford Field. A rough day for Dan Orlovsky, John Kitna, and the rest of the Lions. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by the new AT&T. Your world delivered. This is how you enter the App Store. And this is how you browse over a thousand new apps. And this is how you download one right to your phone. And this is when you realize this is going to change everything. Versatile Hummer ever. The series that changed the face of television is about to do it again with an historic two-hour event. You are now soldiers in the People's Freedom Army. Jew was raising an orb. Jack, don't let them take my kids. Country, now go! Children, I stand over the gate. 24 Redemption, Sunday, November 23rd on Fox. Curve X has the curve Y as a passive. When all you want are the stats to know it all. When all you want is football, go to NFL.com. Well, to follow up on uh, Laura Oakland's story. Anthony Adams playing in front of his father for the first time. There's his dad with what looks like a, a nephew or perhaps a grandson. Just one of the positives that Chicago's taking out of this day here in Detroit. Garrett Wolf takes the handoff and is tackled without a gain. Well, it's over in uh, Millwood Park in Milwaukee. At the Philadelphia Phillies have defeated the Milwaukee Brewers this afternoon. So. We know what our National League Championship Series matchup will be. The Los Angeles Dodgers, the Philadelphia Phillies. And Game 1 coverage starts on Thursday at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific in high def right here on Fox. What a difference Manny Ramirez has made in that lineup with the Dodgers, man. I mean, who would have ever thought that he could get jettisoned out of Boston like that, land in L.A., and put that team on his shoulders? They picked a pretty good time to do it, too. He's going to another huge 
huge mega deal as a result of his heroics in L.A., wherever that may be. Ticking down to a minute left in regulation, your game summary. It has been complete domination by the Chicago Bears on both sides of the football. Kyle Orton with a career best 334 passing yards. Matt Forte, as coach mentioned, the, the numbers might not indicate how big he was in the first half of this game. Well, that you can't have a better day than that as a quarterback. And, and as he continues to establish himself as the guy in Chicago, that confidence is going to do nothing but grow. His players in him, him and himself, the coaches in him, not that they didn't have it before, but uh, this is a slowly building force in Chicago that's going to be something to reckon with as the season progresses. It's a good day at the office for Kyle Orton. And uh, he's taking his handshakes from, from his teammates. And the Bears will spend a timeout. Devin Hester was very impressive to me today in what he did as as you talked about many times Boldy his first real legitimate start is wide receiver uh, and and what he's done uh, today is going to take them a long way going forward as well. on to punt. We welcome those of you joining us that we're watching Washington upset Philadelphia 23 17 Redskins the final score where well, the Redskins have been pretty impressive in the division early this season back to back road wins in that division. Well this one here has been dominated by the Chicago Bears. They put the Detroit Lions in an early first quarter deficit again. It was even bigger in the first half. Matt Forte had an enormous first half. Kyle Orton has been big and on the other side the quarterback story for the Lions not quite as bright. John Kitna benched in the third quarter in favor of Dan Orlovsky. Well, the question is, what does Detroit do now going forward? They got to go to Minnesota and then All right. to Houston and uh, see if they can somehow try to regroup and salvage something of the season. Today's game being produced by Bob Stenner and directed by Sandy Grossman, the associate director, Chuck McDonald. Broadcast associate is Mark Schaefer. Technical producer is Bob Muller. The technical director is Rick Tugman. Tape supervisor, Michael Nathanson. Audio supervisor is Pat Lucaturdo. That's going to do it as time winds down on the Lions. All Chicago Bears, 34-7 Chicago, our final score. Coach Baldy and I are back from Ford Field right after this. Get to an all-new Simpsons any way you can. This coach is a parent-teacher conference. Dennis Leary drops by the Simpsons. All-new at 8, 7 Central tonight on Fox. Sorry for the delay, Mr. Slowski. I have that information for you now. Put me back on hold. I want any information. Uh. There you go. Do stuff faster. Sign up for Comcast High Speed Internet for just $29.99 a month for three months. At ridiculous speeds, it's way faster than DSL from your phone company. And now with Power Boost, your fast connection is even faster. Just call 1-888-4-BEST-TV. Comcast High Speed Internet with Power Boost. Chicago Bears stay on top in the NFC North with a 34-7 win in Detroit. Time for the UPS leaderboard. Kyle Orton, a career-high 334 yards on a magnificent afternoon. Matt Forte played a big role in the Bears' offensive success in the first half. Rasheed Davis added six grabs for 97 yards. UPS, what can Brown do for you? Again, the final score, 34-7 Bears. This is Matt Vaskersian for Brian Baldinger, Brian Billick, and Laura Oakman saying so. He threw for to two touchdowns, no interceptions, and with the Bears' victory over the Lions, coupled with the Packers' loss to Atlanta, the Bears take over sole possession of first in the NFC North. And welcome to U.S. Cellular Bears Post Game Live. I am Pat Boyle. Mike Sy with three former Bears, Mr. GQ, Jerry Azuma, our quarterback, Jim Miller, 
and our lead blocker, Dan Jiggets. A banged up Bears team goes to the Motor City where they just fired their GM. They were coming off a bye and they dominated them in every phase of the game. Well, can I tell you something? There's going to be a couple more fires in Detroit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. Get the resume ready. Man. That's exactly it. Sound like Brian Pe it sounded like Brian Pillick dropped his off to Mr. Ford you know while he, he was there. Did. Some, of his some of his coaching comments, he's, you can already tell he's in the retirement stage because I don't think he would have helped him out. No, that's, this is true. As always, we want to hear from you. You should be in a positive mood about the orange and blue on this afternoon. Send your comments, and uh, you'll see some of them at the bottom of your screen on our sports ticker. Keep the comments short. Keep them clean. You can email the show at bearspgl at comcastsportsnet.com. Let's start things off with our opening kickoff. And, Jigs, let's tee it up with you. Well, first of all, my friends, a little prop here. Have your bear Kool-Aid, my friend. <laughs> I tell you what, it was nice to see the bears return the purr to the lions. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what can you what can you say about this matchup? I mean, I just equate this. It's another bye week for the Bears, so it was a good thing. But a, a great job. Obviously, they didn't play down to the level of their opponent. Here, the Lions are coming off a bye week. People are getting fired left and right. There probably will be more firings. So it's great that the Bears came out and got the job done. I mean, what can you really say about a game like this? I mean, the Chicago Bears 34, Waukegan Junior High School. <laughs> seven. I mean, come on. This is another bye week. Yeah, this Congratulations, is, this Bears. Possibly the worst prepared pro football team oh. I've ever seen. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, now, what happened? Was, you're out there in, I, in Detroit. I live in Detroit. In I live in Detroit. It's a, the, the most intriguing thing. Here, Matt Millen gets fired. And what, what do the Detroit Lions elect to do? They're 32nd in basically every statistical category. They take the whole week off. They've got nothing to work <laughs> on. They took another week yeah, off. They, they, they've they got nothing Sunday to work well. on. Thus, the Bears reap the rewards because that was an awful Terrible. team they played today. I'll tell you what. They let the Lions even hang around in this game. It was 17-zip at halftime. It should have been at least 24, if not uh, you know, 34-zip at the break. Uh, they didn't cash in on any number of opportunities they had inside the red zone. But what I like seeing about this Bears team is some depth. You, know, you had no uh, Nate Basher today, mm -hmm. Tommy Harris suspended, Brandon Lloyd, who had been the most consistent wide out with Kyle Orton. He was out of the well, game, it, and it, it they found up, other guys to step yeah, up. Yeah, it points up an issue, too, and people know that they're going to have an opportunity to make a difference. They are prepared. They come in and get the job done, and it means a lot to guys to understand that if I'm going to get my chance, I'm going to get my shot, then you're going to use me and let me go out there and do my thing, and that's exactly what happened with this Bears club today. Let's get into Kyle Orton's performance. A career best, 334 yards passing. He goes 24 of 34. The two touchdowns, no interceptions. Jim, break down his performance. Was it the best we've seen, you know, since he's taken over the second go around as yeah, a starter? Yeah, I, I, I think it was outstanding. Good performance by him. And I think, again, when you see other targets starting to emerge that he's getting comfortable with, great game planning. You're keeping basically three tight ends on the field. And then you, like we always talk about, then you explode to a different formation. See Matt Forte go out to the slot, put him on a linebacker, get in the matchups that you want offensively. But I thought he spread the ball around. Still, I think he's not always on the same page with his receivers, but it's getting there. Some guys stepped up and made some plays today. Well, let me put it this way. He's more on the same page with his receivers yeah. than you know, Kittner was oh, yeah. in the same book with his receivers. <laughs> yeah. wow. But there's one thing At I don't Kyle's understand. At least Kyle's throwing to the right area. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> in the right area code. You know, here's the thing I don't understand, though. When you look at what was going on with Detroit today, yeah. Why didn't they use Calvin Johnson more? I thought, yeah. for, uh, frankly, that he would be the feature guy this right. weekend because all Roy does is run his mouth, Roy Williams. But they didn't use him Because he was going up against Corey Grant, yeah, too. Right. Right. Yeah. That's the matchup that you'd think they'd take advantage of. And here, you know, it, it's almost amazing. Here Detroit went no huddle. They might have just stayed in a two-minute mode all day. That was really their most effective offense. Can't run the football, can't do anything. Bears are a great game plan defensively. They're blitzing over Manny Ramirez, their rookie uh, right guard that's starting there in Detroit. So... Detroit was clueless, and that's what happens when you don't practice over a bye week. <laughs> so just know that. So the, uh, the Bears end up throwing the rock uh, 34 times, and they ran it 20, uh, actually, about 34 if you care, count a couple Kyle Orton scrambles. Uh, pretty balanced there if you look at it that way. But when you, when you break down a Matt Forte's performance, you really have to include his screen touches yeah. as almost runs. You, you want to know what's great today is uh, you can see his role expanding. You know, that's what's great about Matt Forte. The guy can do it all. 
and that's great game planning by by Ron Turner and spreading the ball around against some other targets do need to emerge but you see this offense starting to grow and starting to hum that we mm -hmm. we diagnosed a week Finally. ago so it's yeah. it's good to see well here's the question I, I ask you now against the the run Detroit yeah. was 32nd in the National Football League they were 22nd versus the pass so everybody says well you know you got to get out and run on these guys and that was my thinking frankly going into the ball game but then you start to think well the reason why they're 30 seconds because everybody's popping them with the run how many people have really checked their passing attack? Mm -hmm. So you go in today, they check the passing attack, and Kyle Orton has a uh, career day at 330 some yeah. yards passing. As a member of this Bears defense and special teams a short while ago, you've got a lot of friends that are still on the defensive side of the rock with this team. Uh, the suspension of Tommy Harris, mm -hmm. it sent a message. They were not happy with what they've seen out of the guy they shelled out a lot of money to in the offseason, a pro bowler who may be injured, may not be, depending on who you talk to. Bottom line, he's got some issues right now off the field. Right. Tommy, I think, has spoken with Lovey mm -hmm. and with Jerry Angelo before they went to Detroit, and he realizes he's got to change some things yeah, around. There was a definitely. message sent, right? There was this definitely week. a message sent. I mean, the Bears are one of the best in, um, in the league at sending messages like that. I mean, Tommy Harris had some issues. We all know that, and we all know uh, what kind of caliber performance that he can bring to the table you know he just has to straighten those things out and get yeah. the ball rolling well, I tell you what that yeah. 35 36 gram would have been enough of a message yeah. for anybody <laughs> I would yeah. Say. yeah it's equivalent to a grown-up timeout we saw it happen down in Carolina with Steve Smith guess what they won without him happened to uh, the Giants with Plexico Burris guess what they won without him the Bears have won without but, Terry Harris but two weeks in a row and it's creating it's creating a competitive my atmosphere question though is, is uh, you know above and beyond all of that and the immediate effect that it had on the team for a guy like him who is going to be one of your, yeah. your your franchise players, how do you handle a situation when you understand, the number one, I guess there was a pattern of him being late and all that, and that's mm -hmm. something he absolutely has to get squared away. But how do you handle all the rest of it in terms of a personal problem? Who do you sit down and talk with when, you know, if you've yeah. had an issue come yeah. up? There's a human element side to it. And, yeah, there's, uh, you know, the director of player personnel. You can go That's talk right. for us. It was Dwayne Joseph, mm -hmm. uh, you know, is that we could go approach him as a player. You get any outside help you need. And I think that's what Jerry Angelo was alluding to. But I just think it creates, a, one, it does send a great message. Mm -hmm. But it creates a competitive atmosphere. How hungry was Anthony Adams today That's right. when he played? And what that's a special day also got an opportunity to step yeah. up. Yeah, and what a special day for Anthony well. Adams, Absolutely. too. Absolutely. Finally released. And uh, you talk about what Anthony Adams had going on with it with his dad. First time he saw him uh, play a football game after being incarcerated. Right. Mm -hmm. um, let's get into some of the conversation with what has gone on in the first half of this ball game. Uh, the tone was set early on. I mean, the Bears came out. I really like the play calling on yeah. that first drive. What did you think of what Ron Turner did with he, that? Yeah, offense? I thought it was awesome because uh, again, a lot of times the Bears one to keep it in two tight end sets which is going to tell the Lions, hey, we know you can't stop the run. You're giving up 207 yards a game, but now you're throwing the ball out of it. So I thought it was creative game planning. They did a great job. Kyle Orton is addressing the media live in Detroit. Let's listen in. Uh, it just means, you know, I just I think I played well today. Uh, but I saw the field well. Uh, didn't play perfect. Uh, I got some room for improvement. And just like the other uh, four weeks, I'm going to go back and work as hard as I can and try to get better. Uh, I mean, we were certainly in a good rhythm there uh, for the middle part of the game. Uh, but we had them on their heels, and, and, we, and we kept at it. Do you feel like this was more than a win? It was like growing too as a, as a team and an offense? I don't know. It was a big win, a uh, division game. Uh, we needed to get to 1-0 and in the second quarter, uh, and we feel like we're in a good, good spot. So uh, two games in a row for us, and we got a big one coming up against Atlanta. Yeah, so you talked about your decision-making and going to the right receiver. Yeah, I was happy with it today. I, uh, uh, missed a couple, uh, so I'll have to come back and, and watch them film and, and see what went wrong. But uh, for the most part, I thought my decision making was good and, and uh, threw the ball to the right, right guy. Uh, what did you think of the catch by Marty? <laughs> it, was, um, yeah, it was great. He, uh, I saw the flag go down and, and we got the you know pass interference and, and he said no, I caught it and I was like I don't you know I don't know about that. It wasn't it wasn't a very good throw and. Uh, and I looked up and saw the replay, and, and it was an unbelievable catch. But those are the guys, you know, those are the type of catches he makes. I mean, he's he's known for it around the around the team. And uh, uh, after seeing it on the replay, it really didn't surprise me at all. <laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, for some reason, you know, it's the same kind of style of defense that we have, so uh, we see it quite a bit in practice, and and uh, just feel like we can execute pretty well against that style of D. With Booker stepping up today, make it a little bit easier without 
Yeah, you know, we got guys that can step up. Marty Booker's a, a, a good receiver, uh, and I think he's just going to get better the more, uh, you know, he, he gets uh, comfortable with this offense, and, and I get comfortable with him. But he's certainly, uh, when he's been in the game, he's made plays for us. Uh, so uh, we, we need to find ways to get him more involved. How much did you like opening up a little bit? I mean, not only throwing on first down, but throwing deep a few times. I love it, you know, uh, especially early down. You know, not necessarily just throwing deep, but as long as we're getting early down completions. Uh, I don't know what our uh, percentage was on first down, but it's been pretty well. It's been pretty good this year, uh, early down completions, and that just keeps us in phase. You know, if, if we if we win on first down, we can still run the ball on second down. We can throw it deep. We can take shots, uh, screens, everything in the playbook still you know still there. So that's a big uh, big part of it is is uh, completing passes on first down. Yeah, you were the first half for nine for nine. On that, that's uh, you know that, that's a credit to Matt Forte too. You know we get a lot of guys down there in the box. Uh, you know we're not just going to beat our heads against the wall and try to run against uh, you know eight guys in the box. So good looks to throw it, and, and if we execute, it's good. Oh, I don't. You know, I think that's a that's a common theme throughout the league. In first down, you're going to get safety in the box most of the time. Uh, people want to try to stop the run. We've got a great running back, a good offensive line, and. Uh, so we'll, we'll obviously have some uh, good looks to throw the ball. After those two losses, are you surprised that you guys are alone in first place? <clears throat> uh, you know, it's early on in the season. I know we've played well. Uh, uh, you know, really all five games, we, uh, there's been some spurts where we, we, we haven't played as well. But uh, for the most part, I think we're playing good football. We're confident. Uh, and we played, you know, five pretty good football teams. So we're happy with where we're at. Kyle, when was the last time you personally had a game like this? Uh, I don't know. I, you know. I got to go back and watch the film. To, I don't judge my performance based on yards or anything like that. I think I've played some good football games early on this season. So we'll go back and check. But I'm um, happy with how I'm progressing. I feel like I'm getting better every week, and I think the offense is getting better every week. Kyle, that one possession ended up in a touchdown pass. You went about three straight plays. Was that by design? Excuse me? One drive ended up in a touchdown pass to Esther. You went about three straight plays. Was that by design? No, uh, just. You know, we we just read coverage, and and if the guys are there, then we'll throw it to them. If not, we weren't really going into this game thinking we we're going to attack uh, one guy. Uh, we feel f felt like we had good matchups uh, across the field. Anything else for Kyle? All right, Kyle, after a career best 334 yards passing, the 34-7 victory, seven different receivers uh, on the other end of Orton passes today. It was uh, Rasheed Davis leading the way with six catches for 97 yards. Devin Hester returned to the end zone with a touchdown. Here's Lovey addressing the media live at Ford Field on Comcast Strong. Sportsnet. <clears throat> this week, uh, some things came together for us. Uh, early on, uh, you know, offensively, as Kyle said, we were able to move the ball and get as many points as we wanted to, but uh, kept it going. And later on, the points were able to, to uh, catch up with the play. Uh, defensively, from the start, you know, the first drive of uh, shutting them down, making them punt, really kind of got us started for the day. Defensive line put good pressure on the quarterbacks all day, able to shut down their run and just uh, make plays. Special teams played hard. Uh, you know, it's the best we've played as a team uh, right now. Uh, Injury-wise, uh, I guess we had one, uh, I don't know if I say major, but one injury with uh, Nick Roach. Uh, going down with some type of shoulder injury. Uh, you know, beyond that, uh, you know, again, good effort by the team. And uh, we still have a lot of things to tighten up, had opportunities and had chances. We'll go back to work next week and hopefully take another step. Question? How good was that to see um, Kyle throw for 334 yards in the passing game for like the way today? Well, it's, uh, it's good, but we're a running football team, and you'd like to be able to you know, start off with the run, but you can stop the run if you continue to put guys in the box. When people do that, we have to be able to complete passes, and that's what Kyle, our offensive line, our receivers were able to do today. Three, three balls and a strike. They all want to walk Katze but Corey Graham has played well every time he's been given an opportunity. True Lane McBride has played a lot. It's good to get Marcus uh, Hamilton up. So we have a little bit of depth. I thought Charles Tillman, of course, played his typical game from start to finish. So, uh, again, most of the groups defensively played well. How much will you make or have you already mentioned that you're in the first place 
you know, hadn't mentioned it a lot. We'll, that'll catch up. Today we just really talk about what we did as much as anything and the effort that we had as I talk with our football team. Plenty of time for that. A lot of football left to go, but that's our, our goal. It's about, you know, getting up on top of the division and staying there. Well, I think we had control most of the game. Uh, we were able to, of course, score. That, you know, kind of solidified some of the things we were doing. But uh, I, I thought we had the momentum uh, from start to finish. Coach, I thought Marty Booker's involvement stepping up Marty's a good player. Last week we got him more involved. Of course, this week even a little bit more. Uh, the receivers did all step up, missing Brandon. Uh, you know, they're, they're a good group. They all have strengths, you know, things that they can do well. But it's about getting in the ball, and Kyle did a good job of that. Did you think Marty got that ball at first glance? You know, to be truthful, I had taken my eye off of the ball a little bit. I just assumed he, he wouldn't be able to catch it. But, you know, we've seen Marty Booker. If you look at his hands, you can see why. You look at those gloves of hands he has, you can see why he'll make catches like that. He right away said for sure he had it, so we felt pretty confident. No. Rod Marinelli isn't looking for any mercy. He's a heck of a football coach. They had a tough day to the day. Believe me, he'll get the truth back. Thank you. Lovey talking about his uh, good friend, the head coach of the Detroit Lions. Uh, 425 total yards of offense. That's usually a couple week performance for the Bears <laughs> offense. Here's a report card on the coaching staff. A minus, A, A minus. Not much to fault with the effort in, in the final tally that we saw. Maybe the challenge, the, the lack of challenge there in the uh, what second quarter, Calvin Johnson. Looks like Keenan stripped him. I didn't even mind that because it, it, I think it shows what we talked about a couple weeks ago. At least the coaches up in the booth, they notified Lovey right away. Hey, he caught it. It's pretty simple right. to see. Got it down there quick. He was ready to throw it as soon as uh, you know they did. Uh, they were just going to call the the pass interference call on it. So gained the the Bears an extra what three yards on the play, plunge it in for a touchdown. And, and, and that plus the fact too that you know you you say sometimes well. You know, was the other team just that bad or in the coaching that bad? And that's why I took a little bit off because they really they looked were. brutal. I tell you what, I wish I had a chance to play. <laughs> I wish I had another chance shot at the lives of this group. Yeah, man. yeah, that was, that was, that was bad. man, that was, it's rough yeah. time. Hey, but this is the team that beat them twice last year. Yeah. That just goes to show you how quickly things can change. You make some bad decisions personnel wise, and, you know, and, of course, on the offensive side, Mike Mark's gone, and and Jim Coletto's, you know, now the offensive coordinator. It made a huge difference with his ball club. Let's get into the receiving core uh, for Kyle Orton today. Rasheed Davis led the way with six catches. Greg Olson, they they were able to use him in the offense. Yeah, right. They found some mismatches out there for him. I thought Devin Hester looked the yeah. most comfortable I've seen as a wideout uh, since he's taken yes. over. You, you knew they were truly humming, and that's why I want this Bears offense to be, and it, it looks like it's starting to go that way. How about that touchdown catch? It was a slant route. You look at Kyle Orton, and that's what we do when the cornerback has the lead on the receiver. you got to throw it at his back hip, rolls him right back into the end zone, makes it an easy pitch and catch so we can just roll it and get the, the easy touchdown. You can tell now Devin's growing in the offense. He feels comfortable dealing with placement of the ball and how his routes need to be at certain points and and how they need to be run against certain is, coverage. Is that because that defensive back his momentum is naturally taking him that yeah. way and, yeah. the, and the receiver that's, knows what he yeah, wants. Yeah that's a quarterback just it's basically leading the receiver but it, it's tough timing to get on because you know Devin's not used to to seeing that you know now basically Kyle's telling him hey I'm I'm trying to protect you so you don't get blown up and you can tell that Devin is a great enough athlete that he can deal with it he's getting it and things will get hopefully better going forward. 34-7 is your final as the Bears improved to 3-2 and two on the campaign, now in sole possession of first place in the NFC North. As we head to break, let's check out our U.S. Cellular poll question. We ask you, with this win over the Lions, what did it prove? Here are your choices. A, the team has good depth. B, that Forte is the focal point of the offense. C, Orton is our quarterback. D, defense is still dominant. Or E, nothing. It's... The lie downs. <laughs> Go to ComcastSportsNet.com, hit the link to Chicago, then click the Bears page. Vote away. Send us your thoughts on today's game at Bears PGL at ComcastSportsNet.com. We're back after this.
it. How about this ball game at Fenway Park? Glad you're staying up. Goals makes That's all right. of those. The only other thing was maybe a little bit on the return yard. You're a little disappointed in that area, but you know what? Uh, you take what you can get and, and make sure you maintain the football and give your offense an opportunity. Yeah, I think their cover units also were really sound. Mm -hmm. You know, they're good tackling. They pinned their um, opposition in deep territory. So I think they did a good job overall. Because the field position did not change you know, to, to the advantage of Detroit. And that, I guess that's the way you have to look at it right. when you're talking about special teams. One of the uh, stories within the stories today, Anthony Adams uh, playing in front of his family today in the Motor City. With that story, here's William Jackson live in Detroit. Take it away, William. Okay, thanks, Pat. And I tell you, Anthony was gracious enough to take time out to spend time with us. A host of family members outside, but he has to be happy to see oh, yeah. his father in particular. His father was incarcerated, got out in April, and had a chance to be on the field with his son today in this whole atmosphere that so many people want to experience. Anthony, talk about what that was like, partner. Man, uh, words is a disservice, man. It's just... It's a great thing to experience, man, to have my mother and my father out in the stands at the same time. Even having him on the field, man, it was just, just a blessing, man. And it was, it was a miracle, man. It was a blessing from God, man. I can't even explain it. And for him to be away from you so long and you want to share so many positive stories and goodwill with him, to have him on the field where you work, where so many people don't get an opportunity to perform, what did it mean for you to go out there and just touch him and, and interact with him? It meant the world, man. I felt like a kid, man. Like, you know, that's what I had been missing, you know, for a long time, man. And it was just, it was just great, man. I got emotional, man. I shed some tears in the locker room after prayer, you know, because I had been praying for him the whole time. He was locked up and everything. And, you know, God answered my prayer, man. And it was just... It was, it was great, man. And, and, you know, sometimes I know when you're playing ball that you look forward to him, but you can motivate him. Has he shared the stories, how you kept him going with all the positive things you've been doing? Yeah, it, and it worked vice versa, man. It was, uh, it was definitely uh, great to see him, man. And um, I told him, you know, I'm not mad at him or anything like that. Uh, I don't have any ill will towards him. I told him God loves him, I love him, and he's going to always be my dad. Okay. Anthony, sometimes we can talk about football and victories, mm -hmm. but that's just a game. We're talking about a real-life experience yes, here, sir. and you definitely came out victorious today. Thank you, sir. I appreciate, right. it. appreciate it. All right. We'll see you, Anthony. All right. Okay. Let's go back to you guys in the studio. All right, William. Great story, and uh, appreciate you bringing that to us uh, with Anthony Adams. And that, that is, you know, we talk about all the negatives that surround this game sometimes, and, and obviously a portion of that story, there is a, a negative connotation attached to it, but... It, it had to be an amazing day, an emotional day for Anthony. There. Absolutely, and you look at the fact, the way things started off for him. I mean, the, during the preseason, he was their starter at defensive mm -hmm. tackle, and everybody comes back, everybody's ready to play. They, ba they basically take him and sit him to the side, and then all of a sudden now Tommy uh, Harris is out, so he gets a chance to come in and, and, and do his business, and it just so happens it's back in Detroit, his hometown, and, you know, the Pitt, Penn State Nittany Lion comes out and has a, a nice day, and his dad's there. How, all special. how proud his dad must be for any bad decisions that his father made. Anthony went and saw him in prison before he was to head out to Penn State. And his dad basically told him, hey, just don't screw up basically the way I did. And for him to come back and see how his son has succeeded has to be a very proud moment for both his parents. Let's get into discussion of the uh, position that uh, Anthony plays in, you know, on that defensive line. Uh, we've seen Tommy Harris, of course, suspended for today's game, inactive last week. Uh, different pieces have uh, floated in and out of Bob Babich's defensive game plan on that front four. And I'll tell you what, with Dusty Dvorak there, with Adonage there, we talked about the defensive ends and how they've played. There's a ton of depth at, at, at the uh, defensive well, line What you think, position. too, and one of the things it does to an offensive line is, you know, you like, you like to sit down and look at all your tape and figure out who you're going to be playing against, you know, all the little things to look for. When you're talking about the Bears' defensive front, you got to adjust to about eight different guys. So all of a sudden, you know, you can't lock in and say, well, this guy always does this or he always does that. And you're going to see that, you know, down in and down out. This is really, uh, you know, a difficult thing for an offensive line to look at. And you talk about the Lions offensive line. I think you saw that today as a prime example. A lot more to come here on U.S. Cellular Bears postgame live after the 34-7 victory over the Lions. As we head to break, here is our U.S. Cellular poll question. This win over the Lions proved what? A, good depth. B, Forte is the focal point of the offense. C, Kyle is our quarterback. D, defense is still dominant. Or E, nothing. 
It's the Lions. Go to ComcastSports.com, click Chicago, then on the Bears page, cast your vote. We'll have the results coming up later in the show. Vision at Dallas last week and then today in South Philly. He 29 carries, a buck 45 and a touchdown. Brandon Jacobs helps the G-Men stay undefeated on the year. He had two touchdowns. Who's not? Well, how about Matt Hasselbeck? 11 of 21 and an interception. Damon Heward and the Chiefs as they continue to struggle for LT and the what do you get from me this week, San Diego Chargers? Who knows what's up with that team as they lost to Miami. Lance Briggs led the way with eight tackles for the Bears this afternoon. And he's standing by with our William Jackson. I appreciate it, Pat, here with Lance Briggs. And Lance, you guys were close to the shutout, huh? Yeah, yeah, we, we almost had it. Uh... Good, ex good, good execution on uh, offense, defense, special teams. Uh, it was a good effort all around. What does it mean when you execute and do what you should do against a team people expect for you to beat? Uh, it just means that, that we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, we put up 37 points and uh, gave up seven. Um, now we, we, we celebrate this win and, and look forward to uh, playing Atlanta. Okay, and Atlanta's coming up. They were beating Green Bay last I saw. You guys in good shape uh, in the division now. Yeah, right now. Uh, you know, if Green Bay lost, then it means we're sitting atop of first place in, uh, in the North Division, which, uh, which is where we want to be. You know what I mean? Now we have to continue to fight for that. We have to fight for our crown and fight for our position. So, uh, you know, uh, bring on Atlanta. Okay. What did you guys do differently today, last year, to be able to put some points up today? You set down Kidna, same receivers, all right. that. We, we were able to do uh, execute all game long for, mm -hmm. for four quarters. We were able to uh, uh, get out of third downs, get them into third and longs, um, get pressure on the quarterbacks, and, uh, and make them throw it high, throw them earlier than they wanted to, and uh, throw it either too high or too low. Uh, we, we were in good position. Okay, and to get a divisional win as we close this thing out, always huge, especially with the Lions losing t twice to them last year. But yeah. more importantly, you guys have two wins you've strung together. Oh, yeah. I mean, it took a while for us to get to actual, our actual division um, opponents. But uh, now that we're here, it's good to start off with a win. All right, Lance, appreciate it, man. Congratulations. All right, okay, we'll see you. All right, guys, so the Bears, a convincing win here in Detroit as the lowly Lions can't get it done. And I tell you, the Bears will come home and get ready to go to Atlanta with a good taste in their mouth. Back to you in the studio. All right, William, thank you very much. Let's get into the, we, we talked so much in recent years that Tampa, too, is the defense that Lovey brought not only from St. Louis, but from his days down in Tampa with Tony Dungy. Has that changed a little bit? I mean, we, we've seen some modifications to this Bears defense this year. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Tampa 2 is basically just the basic coverage. You know, the Bears have run this for years. Um, actually, even before Lovey, they've run it. You know, and basically it's just two safeties over the top. The corners are very important because they have to get that jam on the wide receivers. And the defensive line just basically tee off. But it's just a defense where they keep the ball in front of you and they rally back. Now, you say the, the, the Tampa 2, the two safeties over the top means they're normally in the middle of the field, right? If, you, if the football's in the middle of the field, then they're on the hash marks probably. Correct. So just so if you're sitting at home looking at it on TV, now when they decide to blitz, uh, you know, they want to give you a little different look like the Bears defense is doing now. What do they do? Yeah. To me, it's more single safety. You're right, because they're mugging up those linebackers, and it does become a single safety look because they're bringing two to a side. You know, that's what, uh, like, Monty Kiffin down for the Tampa Bay Bucks, who Lovey Smith ran it in St. Louis when he was there. And now they, they're so far along personnel-wise, they can just do a lot of different things defensively. And you got the corners that can cover man-to-man. -man. That's right. So they so, feel confident about those matchups. And, and, and they're So when more. do you run the, when do you actually see the, they call it the bear two? Uh, when Where do they you just line up? How about third and long situations long. like late in the game today? And Orlovsky's dumping it off to the back, guys rallying up, Passing making a situations. Yeah. So you will take, you'll accept the stuff underneath. That's right. You just don't want it over the top. You, right? you guys have liked though the wrinkle, and we, and we saw it basically in the Indianapolis yeah. game, and it worked great there. Great. Uh, is bringing the linebackers to the line to fill the gaps. Yeah. Uh, take us through that wrinkle to this defense and, and how that's changed some things a well, little basically bit. Basically, what they want to do, what the Bears have been doing, is just showing pressure. You know, they they rely on a lot of pressure and they want to make you check or make you think about what you're what you're going to do offensively. So they're just going to put everybody at the line. You know, it could be a man to man scheme or it could be zone scheme. You don't know, but they're going to put everybody at the line and force you to show your hand. And that's why they always talk about hitting the gaps too in the run game. You better be in that gap. 
because as offensive linemen, you look at it and you say, okay, I'm, this is my guy. No, normally those linebackers would be off the line of scrimmage a little bit, so you maybe do a combination block to get around or you pull somebody out to get around to get that linebacker as he's chasing the plate. Now you don't have to go anywhere because he's sitting right here in your grill. Now if he backs off, all of a sudden your rules change and you have to chase this guy. So it causes some problems, some issues in the run game for the offensive line as well. Again, this is a copycat league. And when the Tampa 2 was so successful and helped the Buccaneers win uh, a Super Bowl, everybody adopted it. Now things change. You find wrinkles. You know, we saw a couple of weeks ago, you know, how, you know, susceptible the Bears are to the short pass and how you got to change things up. This is kind of the league just evolving as it I does. I think so. Well, it's, it, it shows that teams are willing to go after quarterbacks now. We've seen a lot of t quarterbacks go down due to injury, and, and there's young quarterbacks playing right now. You want to put as much pressure on them as you can. And it just it screws up the offensive line's protection is what it does. A gap is between the center and the guard. B gap is between the guard and tackle. If you start overloading the gaps with players where the offensive linemen, say if Erlacher's up in the gap, in the gap What's the center going to do? He's going to call down the guard, say, hey, I need help on this guy in the gap. Now it frees up the B gap. You're overloading that gap. Not enough blockers there, and you're jacking up and the then, quarterback. And then they say, what happens with the free guy? The quarterback has to block him. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Sorry. Come, these guys aren't fighting the free guy. Coming up, we're going to hear from Matt Forte, who's done a nice job chip blocking for uh, Kyle at times I this year. I think he year. got credit for half a sack on that one. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we'll talk to Matt Forte. We'll also get into some Devin Hester discussion as we continue after the 34-7 victory. Bears take care of the Lions. Uh, would like to have improved a little bit upon, but the Lions certainly were in throwing mode most of this game because they were down so much. Matt Forte, 36 rushing yards, 25 yards via the air. Uh, he addressed the media a short time ago. We didn't want to let, let it, um, you know, get complacent in the score and let them come back. So, you know, just score a lot of points is what we had to do. How important is it for this team to now get on a roll? There's something that you guys didn't do last year. I know you weren't here. Just to kind of string together a few wins in a row. Very important because, you know, you can't get one win here and then lose and then get, a, you know, one win there. You know, we got to get on a roll so we can just keep the momentum going from week to week. Okay, any attention to the fact that you guys are in first place alone in the division? Yeah, I mean, of course. That's where we want to be. So. There's been some discussion this week. Are they giving the rookie too much? Is he handling the, the ball too many times uh, early on in his career? And are we going to see, you know, maybe week 12, 13, 14, a drop off in production? Only 19 touches today, 15 carries, four uh, receiving yards. To that, you say what as far as the overuse or underuse? Don't worry about it. Yeah. You know, like I said earlier. He's 22 years old. I mean, when you come into the league that, that young, and, you know, again, he's a guy that's used to carrying the football a, a great deal. And, Jerry, would you have had a problem coming out of college? Uh, you were running back in college. Right. You get 25 touches Give a game. The rock. That's all you need, <laughs> Give right? Give me the rock. By the way, those, those statistics that you just showed? Yeah. That looks like Harvard against Columbia from back in the day when I was playing. That's what he's, they're another group of Lions that can play. <laughs> Those great Ivy League matchups that Jigs. Uh, uh, the wait, wait, wait. my friend. <laughs> when is Harvard Yale game? On about, uh, what's well, so the third week of November? All right. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll sure to get a plug in here on uh, Bears Post Game Live <laughs> about that. Uh, would you like to see, though, Kevin Jones as he continues to come back from his injury? Do you think he'll become more and more a part of this offense? Yeah, I thought that was great today to take advantage of, you know, basically his momentum, a little payback to the Detroit Lions. So I thought overall, you know, he'll get integrated more. But again, at the key moments, your playmaker's got to be in there. And Matt Forte has shown his role can expand as a receiver, as a power running back, at pun punching it in down on the goal line as for making guys miss this guy can do it all so it would only be to yeah. give him a breather right now and, That's and he all does it in be. critical situations too and you saw today it was an example he was running to the left side uh, made about two or three oh, moves yeah. to make the That's defense right. miss and then got some the necessary yardage to, to get a first down. That's what you love yeah. to see in your running back and the guy as you said get physical if he needs to. How about this here we're talking about hey the Bears didn't rush enough today the Detroit Lions had to concentrate so much on Matt Forte and plus they've been so bad against the run what did it open up? Play action pass. 52 yard yarder to Greg Olson and the big play down the sideline. Great point. Uh, that's, mm -hmm. that's good game planning. That's teams focusing on Matt Forte, and he's opening up everything else. That's a good thing. When we come back, we're going to talk about number 23. We're going to ask number 23, what has he seen from Devin Hester in the return game as of late? He's a big part of the wide receiving situation on this afternoon, but has 
certainly dropped off a bit this year in the kick returning game. That's next on U.S. Cellular Bears Post Game Live. Day. And when he came out, I just tried to make sure that I was the one to make play for it. Was this as good as you've seen the passing game click? Yeah, most definitely. But you know, while the, the time was taken down on the last couple of seconds of the game, you know, Cal came out and said, you know, this can't can't do nothing but get in, get even better, you know. And there's so much success ahead of us that we just keep get it going and, and keep clicking the way we're doing out there and um, just striving for excellence. Devin, you're a first place team now. Just some thoughts about that. You know, it feels great, you know, but it's all good when it's said and done, you know, but at the end of the season, you know, that's when it really counts, you know. So right now we're first play, but we, we're we not really dwelling on this, you know. It's a long season ahead, and we got to make sure that we continue to be first. Yeah, there was all that talk about finishing games. I mean, you finished, you finished from the start, it seemed like. Yeah, you know, we just we came up, we came in this mentality that, you know, Let's get on the winning streak, you know, for the past year. You know, last year, the season went up and down for us. We couldn't really get on the streak. So um, this year, we dig deep down the side and say, hey, let's get on the winning streak. And that's what we came out and trying to do. We talked earlier how uh, Devin looked really comfortable for probably the first time this year in the uh, receiving situation. But what have you seen in, in the punt return game? Uh, today, four punt returns for an average of six yards per return. Uh, kickoffs two for 19. He had one punt return call back because of uh, a penalty on the play, and he had the fumble. What have right. you seen from his well, game? I mean, everyone knows what Devin Hester can do. You know, so they're trying to find ways to basically get the ball away from Devin Hester because he's so dangerous. So um, I think that everybody's starting to catch up as well. You know, I think that teams are starting to cover the whole field because they know how explosive and how dangerous he really is. So they're basically just kind of cracking down on him. But he's also been taking some attempts and some opportunities. You know, to the extreme sometimes, looking for those openings. And but that's just Devin's. Yeah, that's I think Devin's that's style. Thing, you know, you look at his decision making because everybody understands he can return the football but the decision-making process is getting better and better for him. Last week, you'll recall, he had one that he lost significant yards on. He's making uh, better decisions now and then more mature decisions. You know, you want to see him make something happen. He wants to make something happen, but don't make it a negative thing that happens. Right. So I, I think in that regard, he's coming a long way. Time now for the guys to give us their Monsters of the Midway presented mm -hmm. by IPA, otherwise known as the Bears MVP. And we begin with you, Zoom. Mine is easy. Kyle yeah. Orton. 121 passing rating. Kyle is our Kyle's quarterback. Kyle is our guy. Jim, what do you have for us? Uh, same thing. Kyle Orton from Purdue. Purdue. <laughs> Big Ten quarterbacks. You got to love them. So Kyle did a great job today managing the game, throwing the ball down the field. Great rating. And what do you have? Uh, Kyle is my MVP. <laughs> wow, I didn't know we were all going clean sweet. Kyle Orton uh, with his uh, career best. Uh, 334 yards passing. He takes over. As the leader in the clubhouse of the Monsters of the Midway standings after five weeks. We're back with more after this. We're back on U.S. Cellular Bears post game live 34-7 is the final. Bears go to three and two on the year. Next up, they'll have the Atlanta Falcons in the ATL. We didn't talk enough about Marty Booker. Probably uh, the catch of the year that was challenged, so that it at least goes in the record books as a catch. But uh, the man's got a big paw. He's got some <laughs> gloves on. Him. Uh, Jerry's just telling him during the timeout some stories about him at practice, yeah. and you guys used to see him at practice. Right. He just can catch. Him. I mean, he's got. Unbelievable ability to catch the football. Unfortunately, some of it was wasted down in Miami with the Dolphins. It was good to see him back making a difference for the beloved. Uh, a lot of people are uh, filing in on ComcastSportsNet.com. They're saying uh, Chicago baseball teams wish they could borrow some of the points from the Bears this weekend because uh, offense has been limited just a touch <laughs> on both sides of town. Of course, certainly with the, uh, the North Siders in their series against the Dodgers. Hopefully the Sox will prevail this afternoon. But... Uh, when you, when you look at what you've seen now from this team after five weeks, and some people are going to say four and one, some are going to say five and oh, some will say they are right where they should be at three and two. Uh, do you have a feel yet on, on what team we really have right now? I think that one of the things that you've seen over the last couple of weeks is in the second half uh, of, of the games when the Bears have a nice lead, you haven't seen them give it back. 
And that, that's one of the things, I, and I guarantee you, everybody sitting at home today was going, okay, 17 zip at the half. What's going to happen in the second half? Well, today they completely shut the door, save for that one touchdown that they gave up as a result of a fumble down in the red area. But other than that, defensively, they shut the door, slammed it, whatever you want to call it. That's exactly what they did. Do you know what we have by now, either, either two of you guys? I, I yeah, definitely think it's a playoff team. Yeah, I, I do. Right. Yeah. I think important next week. Here you're going to Atlanta has won at home. <laughs> you know, Atlanta has oh, won at home. Where is the Kool Aid? Kool -Aid. <laughs> Atlanta's won at home. It's important, like he said, slam it shut quick on them uh, in their stadium because that's where they've had the most. More a playoff team because of the NFC North or just what you've seen in the landscape of the National Football League. Well, go back yeah. to what you were talking about earlier today. The Chargers. What happened to them? You know, uh, you, you look at teams like San Francisco giving people trouble. The Dolphins get their second win of the season. There are a lot of teams, a lot of uh, Buffalo parody. Bills. Yeah. The Bears are Buffalo more. Buffalo Bills yeah. look like they might march yeah. to the yeah. AFC Championship yeah. game. That's a great point because I think the Bears are more a complete team than what we give them credit for. They've had some things where they shot themselves in the foot, but they are a lot more complete than some other teams around the National Football League. When we come back, the results to our poll question this week, and Jerry will tell us who the best-dressed bear was today in the Motor City. Keep it right here. Results from our U.S. Cellular poll question. This win over the Bears proved what to you. Here's what you had to say. 41% plus said Cal is our quarterback. 30% say nothing. It's the Detroit Lions. Time now for Jerry's GQ segment where the Dapper One picks the best dressed bear. And first yes. up, we got the honorable mention. What honorable mention. I mean, it's going to go to Corey Graham. Um, oh, taking care of your home fellow boy. UNH <laughs> grad. <laughs> you guys have, and he had a little country blue on. Do you have a little, like, no. do you, is there a class <laughs> at North New Hampshire as far as the, how to dress? There should be a class <laughs> like that. Professor, Professor Azuma I think I might have to implement that one. With the pipe and That's the big right. boy knot. No, Today, folks, we'll learn how to, to, to pocket properly, squares. Properly, to pocket square. To tie the big boy knot. tie the big boy knot. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Now, what's your winner, winner this week? You know, I'm going to go with Kevin Jones oh, on nice. this one. Okay, you know, he has the fall right. colors going on. He's, he's got, got the, the peach sweater. You know, yeah, actually, I think I like that's that. peach. I think it's peach right there. But, you know, he has the little split collar. You know, look at Sharp. Fall colors. See, John. And he has the big boy knot on. He's doing his thing. That's three credits alone. That's right. <laughs> yeah, wow. Congratulations, that's like a, guys. That's, like, that's about a month's worth of uh, Azuma's curriculum. All right, here's the Jerry's GQ winners through the first five weeks. Forte, Brown, the panel got it week three. Last week was some lean times. And uh, whoa, oh. whoa, whoa, whoa. Sunlight, man. What it's we got going on there. It's like well, that fans all over the globe. Like, yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> I guess like that's that. how we roll. Yeah. <laughs> that's the way we roll. Wow. All right. Well, thanks for the shout out there. But uh, <laughs> all in all, it was a good day in Detroit. <laughs> Until that. Thanks for watching. Oh. Us the Bears Post Game Live for Jerry Zuma, Jim Miller, Dan Jiggets, wow. and our William Jackson and the great Bears fans who made their way down 94 so long. <laughs>